is the beautiful Alicia Fox. Spoke to you and said this, Bob, but my name's Billy. It doesn't matter what your name is. Loaded up with alcohol, more specifically vodka, whiskey, beer, tequila, more beer, more vodka, more whiskey, and more beer. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's coming in here. He's gonna puke. He's gonna puke. He's gonna puke. He's gonna puke. Three ain't enough now. I need five. Welcome in Jim, Ryan, Matt, Tim, and intern Mark. And after tonight, none of you in this ring will ever. Oh my goodness, what do we do? There's a one, there's a two. Oh! oh, wow. Welcome to Three Count Thursday. Live here on our Facebook page. It is Thursday, December 19th, 2019. And we are back live for the first time in weeks. We are the podcast of the millennium. We have tons to talk about. This week, but first, our show is brought to you by Alicia's Pillows and Things. If you're decorating your home, you want it to reflect your tastes and likes. So why not add decor that reflects your sports, movie, and TV fandom? Alicia's Pillows and Things is your hookup. They feature pillows of all sizes, stools, and more with your favorite teams and characters. Log on to our home network, NGSCSports.com. Find the Alicia's Pillows and Things tab on the homepage and place your order make sure you follow and uh and 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 visit ngsc sports often ryan we are also back on remember this this is a blast from the past lieb sports oh well i can't i was gonna spell it now but it's l-e-e-i-b i-b sports.com boy that is a blast from the they past. are they are back uh they were gonna do a that was a, back when it was just just yeah, as, as uh, we are right we now, are actually. Yeah, that's a blast. L-E-E-I-B-Sports.com. Make sure you're also uh, checking out our website, 3 com for all of our social media links, our YouTube page, our merchandise over at whatamaneuver.net, our Patreon page, and much more. Again, 3 com. Baby! Um, <laughs> now, um, oh, I want to get this out of the way because... Uh, Hit my glasses and, and I, smudge the hell I, out of them. And I know I have to have it on here. Uh oh, where is it? Let me see. Let me see. We're looking Let for me... it, folks. Can you hear it? No, nope. no, I, I'm looking for it. Be, but um, I think it's just gonna be uh, the the two of us tonight. The two of us. Here we are. You and um, I. and also, you know, just and and I only need to do this for about ten seconds. Ten seconds. Um, and I don't care if it ruins it for people. Yeah, yeah. Guess what? You were in the game. You're out, motherfuckers. Yeah. Well, I got to do that before our audio gets uh, muted. Oh, that's right. They'll, they'll take that right away. What a great Christmas song, though. <laughs> I was so I was going to do that to Tim regardless this week. Yeah, I had but heard. But he got outed at the... Uh, at the diner. At the diner on, on, on Saturday. Do you so, want to explain like, what we're talking about to anybody? Yeah, so if you don't know, it's the uh, the Wham! last Christmas game. Uh, uh, like Mary wham this or something. I don't know what exactly... Whamageddon? Whamageddon. Whamageddon, that's what it is. So last Christmas by Wham!, you try and make it from, I believe it's December 1st, all the way through Christmas without hearing the song. Now, it can be very easy if you just, you know, just straight up avoid the damn thing. But, like, you're supposed to just kind of be honest and go about your daily business. And if you hear it, if you you and your friends participate, um, you will, like, message your group of friends and be like, I'm out. Right. Whether you're in a store, shopping, in your car. Right, it doesn't right. matter. And, you, and you, you could hear the beginning of it, you could hear the middle of it, you could hear the end of it, but if you hear any of it, you are eliminated. I've never heard of the song before. What's up, Devin? You never heard that song? I mean, of the game before. I, I love the song. I've never I heard feel of the like, game. I feel like that's a thing that like really only just started in the, in the last couple of years. It's such a shame. Like I really do like that song. It's catchy as Oh, hell. I love it too. Um... 
I don't. Like, I'm singing it in my head now. Does it have to be all versions or just the Wham version? I, I think, believe like, it's just the Wham I one. I think like Taylor Swift covered it. Ooh, poorly, by the way. <laughs> um, Frank Boris joined us in my little watch party. Hey, Frank Boris. Um, but I think yeah, I think it's just the Wham version. Because Copy like that. that would make the most sense right. for it just to be the Wham version. Okay, I just wasn't like, sure what the rules were. Um, and I've never actually participated like in the game. So I don't know if I would want to. Like that is one of the few Christmas songs that I will like seek out to want to hear. I, let's be honest though, with what you do for a living, you'd be out like day one anyway. You'd be surprised. Really? That is that not a thing in that world? How many songs do you hear when you walk into that world, Jim? There ain't a radio playing. There ain't no audio. You know, that, I guess you're right. Store. I guess you're right. I never well, that's, really. That's changing once we once we update like their new stores do. Oh, so but it was like it was like a, so next Christmas. Yeah, next was, Christmas I'm done. Uh you'll be done. Um, what's up, Lee? How are you, Frank? Yeah, I don't. Jason's yeah. checking in. Hello, everybody. If I had a group, if I had a group of friends that like wanted to do it, I would. I would do it. I Otherwise, would want to do it with another song. Hmm. We'll have to think about that. Like between. Andy Williams is happy holidays. What about Billy's Last Christmas? Or... Red Sovine, that song. <laughs> oh. uh, painful. What an awful song. Um, go, ahead, go ahead and look up Red Sovine's Billy's Last Christmas yeah. and just get that lump in your throat. Yeah. Gross song. Um, Screw you, Red Sovine. T- two indie shows on the calendar for this weekend. Um, H2O Wrestling's Merry Effin' Christmas. Mm. Uh, this Saturday at the H2O Wrestling Center in Williamstown, New Jersey. Uh, doors are at 7.30. Bell time is at 8. You know what's nice? What's Williamstown that? is beautiful this time of year. I'm sure it I'm is. I'm not sure if you've been, but... I've never been they, this time of year. Boy, do they do Christmas right in Williamstown, New Jersey. I've been to... I've, I don't know if I've ever been to New Jersey in December. It Beautiful weather. Beautiful. Um, and then PPW's Resistance. Uh, that is this Saturday at the Holy Family Academy in Hazleton, PA. Doors are at 5 p.m. Bell is at 7.00. Uh, Hazleton also beautiful in winter. It is beautiful in winter. In we've actually fuck winter. We've been up there for their what their first Impact show. The Impact show, which was like <laughs> Hazleton frozen over. Oh, dude! And I like I, I wore like a, a a a light sweatshirt and shorts. Well, because we were thinking uh, we've never been. This was our first PPW show. We didn't know how warm like the, the setup venue was. was the so venue. I'm like, I'm gonna be safer dressing on the cooler side. I mean, we are larger gentlemen. I'm not sure if you've noticed that. The camera adds a few pounds, but it's pretty accurate. That's a huge bitch. That's the truth. That we both I think I rock shorts. Yeah, I think we both did and my tattoo chipped off. <laughs> um so yeah, be be prepared for some cold weather in, up, in Hazleton. Ryan's checking in. Hello, Ryan. We share a common interest in wanting to go see the band Fozzie. Fozzie yes. in Lancaster coming up in May. I'm, I'm definitely, I, I've, I've missed them every time they've been around here. You okay? Ryan, I'm assuming, My, Ryan, you've seen Fozzie. The other Ryan, not me, he, Ryan. He interviewed Ryan. Uh, Chris Jericho, I think, the last time they were. Was that Chris Jericho or was that Moon Goose, Moon McQueen. Goose McQueen that you interviewed? What timing was that? Was it, it would have been Chris Jericho. I think it was Chris Jericho. He, he, hasn't, he hasn't been Moon Goose McQueen in, in a very long time. Has it been a while? That long? I think it was only like their first two albums, which came out literally in the 90s. L- really? I believe. Oh, my God. Yeah, when's the first? I think the Liberally fir- in the 90s? Let me find out. Um, Unfortunately, now this was supposed to be our Maria Christmas. We wish you a Maria Christmas episode. We wish episode. you a Maria Christmas. Um, last week, we had no internet. This week, the phone connection, the phone's... Not working. Not good at all. We so, tried, but boy, it's not right. So, um, I mean, I can talk into a tin can over my microphone, and that's still going to be better. The first Fozzie album, self-titled, came out October 24th, 2000. Wow. Yeah. Holy hell. 2000. 20 years running. And, I, and yeah, that was <laughs> personnel, Chris Jericho, credited as Moon Goose McQueen. There it is, Moon Goose McQueen, folks. Uh, I love it. Ugh. Scotty popped in. He wants to let us know that Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. Now, we were discussing this. We were out um, at a local diner. We did our uh, our gift exchange. Oh, we did. Um, now, if you see in the in the left side of your screen... Right um, next to that Miz Championship belt. You'll see a, a framed picture with a, with a beautiful, beautiful blonde lady. Yes. That is one Kim Lemon... 
from the WGAL. female anchor of uh, uh, WGAL here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. That was a, a gift from intern Mark. What a beautiful picture, really. It, it is a beautiful picture, circa 1990-something, I'm sure. Um, it is autographed to Charlotte. Right. I don't know Charlotte who. Um, but that was, a, that was a Christmas gift from uh, intern Mark to Tim. That is why he, she is sitting in Tim's place Really, what, what, what Mark did was gave Tim a cherished fairly, a family heirloom that can be handed down from generation to next little Timmy's to next little Timmy's because Kim Lemon isn't going anywhere. She is going down in the annals as one of the greatest WGAL from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. hundred percent, a hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, so I, that I believe Kim Lemon graduated from our high school alma mater. Did she now? I believe so. I'm gonna look that up, but I really feel like she did. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you, yeah look that up because I I was unaware if that's actually a thing. I don't know. Uh, why William I would Jacqueline know that. joining with us. We have a lot of people in here tonight. Maybe that's the maybe that's the key. We need to take a few weeks off. If you're following along, we appreciate you. We hope you have a wonderful holiday season, um, or at least I do. I think Ryan Ryan's pretty much out of um, his, no, I'm, his I'm, cheeriness at this point. Of I the am season. at the stage where I'm like trying to listen to Christmas music. I listened to Christmas music my whole way home today from my drive, which is really? about a 45 minute commute. Trying to get myself like really jacked up into the season. I work retail. I'm a HR manager, um, so I I deal with a ton of shit. <laughs> um, but I really, really am trying to get into this like into the spirit here. I've I've purchased almost all of my gifts. Um, I'm, I'm ready to do some wrapping, which I absolutely I hate, hate rapping. doing i hate rapping at this point of the year like if, if you have to deal with issues are you just like yeah. shut the fuck up who me yeah no, i can't i would probably no. lose lose it, the old job ski i'm sorry kim lemon graduated from Mannheim township high school Ah, okay okay well that's close enough to us so she's a she's a local gal but in your head you're thinking shut the fuck up for the most thinking this i'm surrounded by idiots no, I can't. No, think you, no, that. that's you, we're kidding. We're kidding. We're 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 all in fun here. Um, again, we do appreciate you following along with us tonight. Um, and uh, wait, what? What? Roman Reigns is on the Steve Harvey New Year's Eve festival in a match. Uh, the Steve Harvey New Year's Eve. For, yeah. Festival. First off, what is the Steve Harvey New Year's Eve festival? Um, number two, he's in a match. I and number three, who is he facing? And Frank, Wendell Woodbury. Yep. Wendell Woodbury. Uh, I'll tell you this much. Wendell Woodbury is no Kim Lemon. <laughs> um, uh, a woman that I knew from my church. That was uh, Wendell Woodbury's daughter. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. How about that? that. So I, I actually knew Wendell. Uh, not Dick, Ho- Dick Oxworth. Um, it's on Fox. Oh wow! I'm gonna I didn't... have to look this up. What is this called? Well, that makes sense. SmackDown on Fox, so they're they're promoting the hell out of that. I'm, I'm gonna look up a very Steve Harvey New Year. <laughs> um, well, he were always gonna do this as my as my you bring it um segment, but since we're getting some activity here in the in the chat, feel free to uh to 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 answer this as well. Um, but Ryan, one thing I thought, and I don't think we've ever really touched on it here, is. Excuse me. Um, favorite holiday traditions? Like, is there anything that you do now or that you did, um, like, as a kid growing up? Is there anything that sticks out to you as a favorite holiday tradition? Like, I know um, a friend of mine. Uh, well, you know, Jason, our friend. Not your uncle, Jason. Yeah. Uh, my, my friend, Jason. Yeah. Our friend, Jason. The, um, the bowler. The bowler. Um, he and his, uh, his in-laws, I believe... Every Christmas Eve, uh, they go out to the mall and uh, and 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 people watch, and they have like a bingo card. Oh, yeah, for yes, like I've seen for that. like you know, guy frantically searching for jewelry, or like you know, person that has uh, you know spilled eggnog on their shirt. I don't know. I don't know what the things on the on the on the uh, bingo card are, but they uh, they try and and obviously get bingo. At the uh, at the mall on Christmas Eve. So, is there anything like that, that you did that that you know that you do now or did as a kid that 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 you're like, yeah, this this was this was one of the fun ones. Growing up, um, we would always do my mom's side of the family, like Christmas on Christmas Eve. 
Um, so I'd always like get to see like my cousins and my aunts and uncles on my mom's side of the family. It was always Christmas Eve. Um, really started from like when I was a child with my mom's father. Like that was always the mm-hmm. thing to do. Um, as families like grew up and grew apart um, and started their own families, that tradition kind of stopped. However, my family, we always still exchange a gift. One Christmas gift. Eve night. Okay. Right. Right. Um, growing up, we would go to my my grandmother's house. Um, my mom's, my mom's mom and dad. Um, so it would be, you know, me and my brother, my mom and my dad, my my uncle who is my mom's brother, my aunt and my two cousins. We would go to my grandma's house. We'd usually get pizza. Um, you know, my grandma would always have a veggie tray, like desserts, all of this. Um, and we would do like the presents from grandma from like mama and papa uh-huh. okay um would uh would be christmas eve night because then we would do our, our family stuff and and we would go to my other grandma's and that on christmas day so like christmas eve was always uh was always at my at my grandma's so um i feel like christmas eve is like national largest like frozen pizza consumption day or just pizza in general or something like that but because i feel like pizza is a very popular hi, Zach, christmas hi eve buddy dish um yeah, if that's what you want to call. Well, it. and I think it's because a lot of um a lot like I mean a lot of people still have to work Christmas Eve. I used to work a half day. My company now closes full day Christmas. Oh, nice. Um wait, Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Okay. Sorry, yeah, we're we're closed Christmas. Um <laughs> so what do you guys do it open on Christmas. Um my uh, but my wife still has to work. So like um like I think this year I think we're getting like Chinese takeout. Oh, that's also a very yes. Um, sure. But uh, I think it's just because, like, there's people who still have to work, but you're going to in-law's houses sure. or cousin's house or grandma's house or whatever. So, like, people aren't coming home to cook a full meal. Right. Um, so it's like grab takeout, pizza's open. You know, like, you're not – I don't think you're going to do, like, a, you know, $100, $100 spread of McDonald's on Christmas Eve, although that sounds – Sure. That sounds pretty good. We didn't win about. a national championship to earn that. <laughs> I have it here. Fox has set its lineup for its third annual Fox's New Year's Eve with Steve Harvey. How about that? I never knew that was the thing. Live from Times Square, Maria Menounos and ex-NFL player Rob Gronkowski will co-host the evening, which will feature feature a performance by the Village People as the group tries to set a world record for the largest YMCA dance. So that's happening. Because nothing... Nothing says says Happy New Year like, like the, YMCA. the YMCA. LL Cool J and DJ Z Trip will headline performances, Who? Uh, which will also feature the Chain Smokers, the Lumineers, Flirter Jerjerland, boring, the Backstreet Boys, boring, Tyga and the Killers, boring, along with celebrities including Gordon Ramsay, I like him, uh, and Will Arnett. Boring. The evening will also feature a WWE match with Roman Reigns. That's all it says. I don't think he's wrestling Ric Flair. So there it is. Thank you, Scotty. Can he wrestle for Gordon Ramsay? Oh, that would be great. Um, I don't know. I think Gordon Ramsay could probably win that. Thank you, Scotty, for bringing that up and letting us know. Because uh, I know what I'm doing New Year's Eve now. I that did is, not know that. That is fantastic. Um. But uh, in terms of like things we do now, this uh, last year and this year, my my like a like a group of friends of, uh, in mind, like it's like four couples. Like we have done like friendsgiving, and then we've tried to do like a Christmas thing. And what? this year we did like a secret Santa. Okay, so yeah. I think that's something we're gonna try and like do y'all every pick year. Pick a name. Yeah, it's actually there was like a website. It's called like Elfster or something. Yep, Elfster, yep. So yeah, everybody just like one person will like create the event, put everybody's name in there. And when everybody's in, like, they'll just they'll hit a button and it'll just Generate. send you an email out, right. tell you who you got, and then uh, you can actually create like a wish list. Sure. Just, like to give somebody an idea. Because here's the right. thing: like, I've been married 11 years. I, I have a hard time shopping for my wife. I believe as it. it. Is. And my 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 wife, right. more or less, somebody else's wife. Right. Um. So it, you know, it, and I mean, if it, I mean, I would think like booze. panties would always be a good idea. <laughs> Especially the edible ones, right? right. Just absolutely. Right. I mean, uh, I mean. Actually, he might give me a high five. See, see, I should have, I should have gotten that idea a few weeks ago. Tyler, how's it going, bud? Too late. Uh, again, if you're following along the live video, please give it a share, give it a like. We'd appreciate that. 
Also, favorite holiday traditions, if you have any, um, feel free to throw them here in the uh, in the live comments. Throw them. Literally throw them. All right, just throw them. Just chuck, chuck them, them up there, folks. Just chuck them out there. Um, so we'd appreciate that. Um, but, I mean, really now, like... Who's watched Star Wars? Has Star Wars come out yet? Has that movie is it out? Is like the it first is, show is, is happening out, right yeah. now? Yeah, because I think I think Matt had seen it at like a six forty five showing. Tim, I think, had seen it at a seven thirty. Okay. Um okay. so both real g- great reasons why they're not here. <laughs> um, um How about this? Star Wars is fake. <laughs> uh I saw Iron a, Man dies. Who was it? I saw an account earlier that talked about I me. Mean, he was dead agent. all along. Bruce Willis. Let dead. me uh, let me find it because it was actually a really great tweet. Oh, uh, Ryan, you'd be so pissed today if you had an iPad because they changed the Twitter app. Nope, don't do change well. Um, that's for sure. But uh, it, that that caught me off guard. I mean, I'm I'm adjusting already. I have just started going back to Arby's since they switched from Pepsi to Coke. Yeah, and you still bitch about it. So uh, like they, I don't do change. Our friends over at the uh, New Age Insiders. Now they what don't they don't do their show anymore uh currently. Gosh. Sorry, I kicked you in the foot. Well, my foot was way over there. Um, That's my fault. But uh they they they're still pretty active on Twitter. They tweeted earlier today cuz I think a couple of them at least um I know Bill Neville the the voice you hear in our uh in our intro. What a sweet man. Sweet guy. Um he I know for sure is a Star Wars fan. But they tweeted out earlier, and this is a great point, the similarities between Star Wars and WWE are actually striking. Both are universally adored by the people that ridicule them the most. Both peaked years ago, and people can't admit the magic isn't the same. Both are for kids, but really for adults. Vader. Wow. So, I mean, that's... There it is. Wow. Straight um, from that was Yeah, well, yeah, it works. I wasn't uh, trying there, but... Um, but, yeah, so that, that was extremely... Uh, it was extremely kind of mind, mind, mind opening. So oh, thanks, guys, for New Age <laughs> New Insiders. New Age Insider. Um, they're on the outside now. But the, you know what I'm really looking forward to this year at Christmas? I don't have to leave my house. Really? So Christmas Eve, uh, my mom and stepdad and grandma are coming to my house. Nice. Christmas morning, my dad is coming to my house. Nice. And Christmas afternoon, my in-laws are coming to my house. Look at that. I am so happy. I can't even begin to tell You're you. You're not even going to fire up the truck once. We, we, no, we used to joke like that we were going to have kids for the sole reason that if people wanted to see us on Christmas, they'd have to come, they'd have to, come to our house. We didn't even have to have kids, and it's happening. Look at that! It's 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 amazing. Look at that! It is freaking amazing. I am so happy about it. Now, are you guys like cookie bakers? Ah, uh, my wife is. I would burn the kitchen. That's down. fair. That's true. Um, but she uh, she baked some a couple weeks ago because she she sends them some to her coworkers in another That's state. Very nice. Um, and uh, I have eaten a lot of cookies in the past few weeks. That's fair. Um, and like. Yeah, it it's just there. There's it's a lot of cookies. It really is. You are a cookie guy, though, right? Uh, dude, I I love cookies over. Like you would pick cookies as a dessert over a lot of things. Diabetes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not like I'll eat cake. Uh, I enjoy brownies over um, cookies. Uh, right, no, co- cookies or cake. Cookies. Cookies or brownie. Cookies. Cookies or cheesecake. Cookies. Fuck you. Not really? that serious. No, dude, is it, give me yeah, a good fucking cookies. chocolate chip cookie. Get di- di- out of di- diabetes. Cookies. I love cookies. Cookies over or ice cream. <sighs> ice cream sandwich with cookies as the dough. Okay, how about cookies or like mint chocolate chip? Just a bowl of ice cream. Mm. That I would probably go ice cream because you're you're a mint chocolate chip guy. Yeah, I I mean I I, I ice cream would probably be my number one like in terms of dessert. Okay. But We're just trying to chip through all the diabetes with all of us. <laughs> diabetes. But so like, what is like your A1 number one dessert? Absolutely. You go to a restaurant, you get a nice meal, you want a little bit something else. What do you order? You can order anything. Um, Tiramisu, the, cheesecake, cookies, oh my God. whatever you would want. Um, pumpkin pie. See, pumpkin pie, like even though like, I mean, I can eat pumpkin year round. Like, right. Pumpkin pie is only going to be like a Thanksgiving, Christmas sort of a thing. Um, for me, I would probably do like a, like a warm brownie with vanilla ice cream. Okay. That's your absolute go-to. Yeah. Man. Like I'm not a cake guy. That's fine. Now, if I'm at the cheesecake factory, that's a different story. 
Okay. Because like that in I mean I mean it has it its name. It's the yeah, it's you know, you don't go to, you don't go to like a you know Philly cheesesteak place to get a burger. You know, you get a fucking cheese. I, I bet they have good chicken nugs there though. Yeah, I mean excuse me, can I get the chicken nugget? Oh, you're I was back at, of the line. Okay. I was at Roma the other day or, or like local yeah, parlor yeah, yeah. like pizza parlor, Italian pizza, shop. One, of, one subs, of the forty-seven that. that are in the <laughs> right in greater the... Lit- greater Lidditz <laughs> area. Yeah, uh, they have like oh, sorry forty-six. Somebody drove into the back of Lapia. Yes, forty-six operational, forty-seven <laughs> built. Yeah, well, 47, 46 and a half. Anyway, <laughs> they sell like a fish sandwich there. Did you ever know that a fish sandwich? Yes, they sell like Roma. a fish sandwich on a roll with mm. like French fries combo. And I was like, oh, that's so weird. I never would think like an Italian joint selling a fish Sammy. I mean, I assume it's just like, like you know, a frozen like a, piece of hat. Like, right. Like a frozen piece of hat. Like, I mean, no different than buying it than a fish fillet. Dude, you know what? It just seems like I would I would never go to like a pizza parlor. And no, be like, but you know, what I want... I, you know what I've gotten at, at Sheets already? Oh. They have, uh, you know, like their snack wraps. Yeah. They have like grilled chicken. Yeah. They have fried chicken. Mm-hmm. Fish. They have like fish tenders. Dude, God. delicious. I'm telling It'll you. It just gave me the chills thinking about gas station. <laughs> Dude, fish you got to get it out of your head. Sheets is a bona fide restaurant, oh, kind of, anymore. Man, that gave like, me chills. Yeah. Like fish. If you want, like, I guess I, anything fried's fine there, so. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fried. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not getting like a. I'm not getting like a like a salmon fillet, a seared uh, tuna, oh taco. Yeah, like I'm not going. I'm not going to Sheets and getting uh, sushi. Getting their sushi. Yeah. Oh fuck you, Devin. De- so what, Devin? It is the absolute truth, and you're hungry now too. Yeah. So go keep to listening sh- to us. And go down to your local sheets. Yeah. Go to sheets. Get some fish and shut up. How do we? We always do end up talking about. Here's the deal. It wasn't a ton to talk about in the wrestling world. Um, we're going to definitely get into some of the TLC pay per view, which I was a little well, we're underwhelmed talking about Christmas with. traditions. We're which talking about Christmas and then it's right, Christmas right dinners to and food. Like I mean, desserts and fish. Fish, I do, yeah. Fish and fish. sheets. Now, like, and, and here's the thing. Here's another thing. What is your go-to sheets order now that we're at sheets? Do you have a go-to? Um, I obviously do because that's how I am. No, dude. It, it'll be completely random. There'll so be, you walk in and you're like, I don't even know what I want, and you start pushing buttons. Yeah, like I'll just like I I have stood at the menu and I've gone into like the Mexican food and backed out. I've gone into like the burger, backed out. Um, breakfast at any time of day, Naturally. backed out. Um, salad, backed out. Nacho and. Like the, my wife gets mad at me. She's like, "Just pick something," and I'm like, right. "I can't. I can't just. I, I feel can't like just Dana's pick like something. a very. I don't want to say basic, so it'll take that the wrong way. But no, she, she probably is, goes 100%. in. And she, I, I feel like she would be like grilled chicken sandwich on like a pretzel roll. Yeah, no, she she mayonnaise is. lettuce. And well, done. and here's the thing: like, if, if usually if we end up at, at Sheets, it's it's one of two things: either was, she wants hot dogs, we'll go to Sheets. There's like two hot dogs. hot dogs. Devin's got it. Yep. Um. Or it's, you know, we'll just stop somewhere, but she'll, she will get f- fairly similar things. I was very big on their chili cheese dogs. Ooh, chili I cheese. Do like I think it's like a buck fifty nine instead of like two for 99. Whatever. It's a great deal. I have now switched to like just a piece of provolone cheese, onions, and sauerkraut. Ooh, that's two of those bad boys. And then I put the ketchup on because they never do the ketchup right and it sogs the bun, which the... Uh, the sauerkraut will do anyway for you. I was going to say. I don't love their French fries, but damn it, I love their mac and cheese bites. Um, they have these new things right now. They're called like. Gross. Hate them. The, the, the potato bacon yep. bomb thing. They don't do it for me. Oh, my God. Yep. They are nope. so fucking good. That's what I get for trying something new. Yeah. If you're, if you're in a sheets zone, go to sheets, get the potato bacon, bo- bacon bombs, buckle, 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 report buckle. back to us uh, if, if you're thumbs up or thumbs down. Um. But another thing I would do on Christmas. Oh, shit. We have breaking news from Atomic Championship Wrestling. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Coming to Atomic Championship Wrestling Friday night, February the 28th at Club Reverb in Reading, Pennsylvania. This is their February show, not the one coming up in December. February February. 28th, former TNA Impact star, NXT star, and current NWA star, Cowboy James Storm swinging in to Atomic Championship Wrestling. Well, that's exciting. That's February the 28th. They have a show coming up, not this Saturday. This Saturday, go support H2O or PPW yes, up in Hazleton. Yes, 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 yes. Both beautiful locations. We've established that. 
coming up on the 28th. They are having what's called Snow Day up. God, I hope it doesn't snow. Because I hate driving to Reading in the snow. It did it once, and I made it. I just it. hate the snow. That's true. Uh, doors at 6, Bell 630, Snow Day. Um, and our gal Felicia Rose is going to be back up there. Nice. Love Felicia Rose. And they have a special, not announced, WWE superstar that has never been to ACW oh before. So, random guest from the WWE, never been at ACW before. Who knows who it could be? Just get there. Just, Just do it! Get there. There you go. Um, so we will, uh, I think we we plan on being on the air next Thursday night, day after Christmas, because, you know, like, part of tradition, year-end tradition, we got to give our top five matches of the year. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, that, that chicken's coming to roost real soon. Um... So uh, make sure you uh, you do that. But another favorite Christmas tradition is going to Sheets and getting the free coffee, except even though their their coffee sucks, it's free. So I like to get it. Do they have the worst coffee for a gas station? Um, I don't drink the coffee. It is it is my all. least favorite. Now I've never gone to um, like the Sunoco up here on the corner. Uh, like a you know, I like, feel like that coffee's been sitting there for three or four days. But like. Um, you know, like Speedway has Dunkin', which isn't very good. Okay. But it's better than uh, at least the ones in the Speedway. Like, I, I haven't gone to a actual okay. Dunkin' in a right, while. Right. We're supposed to be getting one in Lidditz What's at up, some Josh? point. What's up, Josh? But uh, out of the, out of like Turkey Hill, Wawa, uh, Speedway. Did we get down to the Rudders? Sheets. Uh, I've never gotten down to the Rudders. I heard they have really good food, Jim. I've heard they have really good food. I've also heard that they have terrible food, so... Really? I guess it depends who you talk to. Look at that. AEW, NXT, right? It's everywhere. <laughs> um, all right, let's talk about uh, TLC a little bit. I mean, it, it was... It was, it was really, really a, a letdown, and I was really upset when Lisa Left Eye Lopez passed away. Mm, yeah, that was... Um... <laughs> I don't know why you always bring up TLC in December. You know it's something I know. like I, I don't want to chase the waterfalls, <laughs> but I have to. <laughs> um, you can see Tim's not here because we didn't want no scrubs. <laughs> there you are, Tim. Um, miss you, buddy. We, uh, it was past Sunday, uh, of course. Now, I thought there was eight matches, counting the pre-show match. I thought there were six really good matches, and then there was two, like, meh matches and unfortunately the meh matches were the final two matches yeah that kind on of the think, card i feel like that soured everybody's opinion uh, on the whole show the lashley rusev match not very good and then the kabuki warriors uh becky lynch charlotte flair now ashley i know i know like Kyrie sane uh got hurt during the match um that obviously had a negative impact on the match i mean we, we've we've often talked about over the history of this show you go back to one of our earliest episodes um and the wrestlemania 30 match brock lesnar and the undertaker undertaker got hurt he was just talking about it broken skull session somewhere yeah. in the first couple minutes of that match he got concussed um i think it was a belly to belly like or i think if you got, go back and yeah. watch it he he bounced his head off the mat and um and that had a negative impact on the match itself so um obviously not not anybody's fault um, it is a it is a unfortunate thing that happened, but um, this was. Have you gone back and seen like some of the moments mm. after? And I think we we talked about it and it was happening live, and we didn't really realize what had happened with Kyrie saying. But Charlotte like really struggled. It looked like to get Kyrie yeah, up, yeah, to like power bomber then through a table, and like Kyrie just wasn't responding yeah. well to like being. And I think it, like started slapping her on like the arm. I don't know. It looked really bad, and then Charlotte was like. Da, boom. Yeah. Which was kind of rough to see. Like, and maybe she didn't realize the state of, of Kyrie Sane, but I would feel that like if you knew somebody was concussed, you wouldn't proceed to then slam them you know, I, I, through and a I, table. And here's the thing. Obviously not a wrestler, um, but as a as a fan and and as a person who like critically views shows. Sure. Um, sometimes to a fault, and, and we'll kind of talk about that when we talk about the Wednesday night wars from last night. Um, but watching that match and then going back with this knowledge and, and looking back at it, Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair are a tale of two very different people. 
mm-hmm. in that match. Becky Lynch is is actively trying to like protect Kyrie Sane, like yep. m- you know, get her. She she pushed her under the ring, right? Rolled her under at the one ring. point yep. to just kind of like protect her from spots. And Charlotte's just like, well, fuck you, putting you through a table. That's what it looks like. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying to shit on Charlotte. I'm really not. But like, man, it but just you're like spreading butt cheeks now. Just let it let her rip, <laughs> right? Like there's there's just there's definitely. Two, two very different ways to handle that match and and becky like i'm not the biggest becky lynch fan um right like i i'm not discrediting her from a from a talent standpoint or anything like that just i've never been the biggest fan of becky lynch you can go back in the archives on this show and then we've talked about it matt has been a huge champion of becky lynch for for years um and it was never about talent for me it was just something about the character didn't connect um but you it know it was the steampunk thing yeah i just i don't get didn't it like it um i mean that was i think the start of it but then you were like oh, there's just not a lot there to like for you, you know that and, and like the man stuff was fun becky two belts was fun um but you know watching her in that ma- i have a different re- level of respect for becky lynch to, to see her kind of take that like ring general like you know like i i think back to like there was a, sm- a summer slam where kurt angle got like knocked out and Triple H just like reacted to it and and kind of carried the match mm-hmm. and pro- like protected Kurt but finished the match and this and that and he took that on himself like that that kind of puts you in a different landscape of, of superstar for me so so um, and I think Kyrie saying like Pooch tweeted out the next day right like like a, like thumbs, a thumbs up, up or yeah. something like ah, I'm not dead um yeah like she like she's good she's fine um but. You know that's that, that a, that's a scary moment. That that matches Rob Knox just joining us tonight. How you doing, Rob? Rob Knox. Um, hello, Rob. It's great to see you, my friend. But like, I think Alistair Black, Buddy Murphy stole the night. I thought that match was was really really good. Mm-hmm. Um, the 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 opening ladder match, Humberto and Andrade, and that that's a that's a story that's continuing. Um, and, and they had a banger of a match on the on the kickoff show. Um, dude, and here's the thing, man. People, I know people don't like him. Baron Corbin's gotten so much better. Corbin's great at what he is, though. He is. He is. is, like, is, is I don't he's... think Corbin's ever going to put, like, big flippy-do matches. Corbin's also not, like, this really big bruising guy that, like, is a stereotypical Vince guy. But he has gotten so much better from his NXT days. Like, bald head, this King Corbin sort of thing. It's a it great is, It run. is perfect for him. And people shouldn't like him. Right. Because he's a heel. Right. He's a heel. There it is. Um, yeah, you're not supposed to like him. But here's the thing: like, when people are like, "Oh, Corbin fucking," so-. no, he doesn't. Like, you may not like it, right? You may not like him. You're not. You're not supposed to. Here's the deal, Jim. Like, like I know we don't. We're, we're not talking about AEW yet. You clearly are not an Omega fan. You you do not. You're not a fan of Kenny Omega. He does the hands. He runs weird. You're very critical of what Kenny Omega does. I don't think you're ever going to discredit Kenny Omega for being a good wrestler, though. No, no. He's a good wrestler, but I can't... You don't like things about Kenny Omega. I can't get past pointing and hopping and skipping and... But you're never going to say he sucks. No, no, absolutely not. So people don't like Baron Corbin... Right. For what he is and what he does, but I don't think you could say Corbin sucks. No, I, I mean there are people that do, and I, and and there was somebody in there. I feel our, like they're wrong then. They, they are wrong about that. Like Corbin does not suck. You don't. You may not like him. You don't even have to like him. But he he certainly does not suck. Th- this show it was a bummer because I, like I really I really had this show like A minus B plus through through the you know right. It gets the Homer discount, and then pff, yeah, like it fell man, off a cliff. like C minus dude. Like the whole last like fucking hour of this show. Yeah. Was just not good, and then you're going to send me into the Broken Skull sessions with Goldberg. Oh, brutal! Ooh, <laughs> Shut up! just yeah. I I I tried to to keep watching and just uh, yeah. I just it didn't capture me at all. Like and and maybe that's WCW versus WWE guy. Like I just don't think like Steve had any sort of connection to Goldberg. Right, like, like Taker, they he did. just don't have chemistry. They never shared a ring together. Um, they were in the WWE well, for a cup for of coffee. Well, except for WrestleMania 20, that god-awful Lesnar-Goldberg match where Austin was the ref. Uh, okay, that's <laughs> fair. But, like, I remember, like, when Goldberg won the championship, 
from Triple H. Mm-hmm. Was Austin Stone, like a GM? Stone Cold was like the Raw GM at that time, but like never even appeared on the pay per view. Was yeah. like up in like the, I think time. that was at Hershey. Even. That was he did win it from. Tri- I, talk about pissing me off. Yeah, that was yeah. You're a um, big trips guy. Yeah, big trips guy. Um, and that was and, the last time they had a pay per view in uh, Hershey back in 2003. 2003. I think that was the last time they had a TV show in Hershey. It seems like it. Memory serves right. Um, I might have had that SmackDown. I think well, the I know SmackDown they had Raw Old School. Was SmackDown with The Rock, I think, was the last TV. It was. Yeah. God, that was a long time ago. Yeah, that was... Uh, it's been house shows ever since. I hope WrestleMania a, 29. I hope AEW years. runs there. I'd be fine it's, with it's it. it's a smaller venue. It's away from Philadelphia. Right, and you can tarp off three quarters of the building and it'll be Jim, totally fine. Don't do that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I don't didn't, do that. I, I didn't mean that almost all the whole way. Uh, hi, James. Hi, Phil. Welcome back. Put him uh, in the Zembo in. Shrine. They can sell that out, right? <laughs> Somebody's got to. Uh, but yeah, I mean, TLC was, was TLC. Uh, a, a streak broken at TLC, Let's though. Let's talk about that. Uh, John Cena wrestled uh, at almost every uh, WWE pay per view. Um, or at least most of them, 2002 through 2018. Tradition changed in 2019 as he was neither part of a match in a pay-per-view or weekly WWE programming, that, which ended a 17-year streak where he did not perform in the entire calendar year. And we're talking about a specific match. Yes, an actual match, because I think he showed up word life at WrestleMania. At Mania, roughed up. Elias. Yes. Wasn't actually a match. Bell's never read. Was not actually a match. Uh, so, yeah, John Cena. Now, theoretically, I guess the streak could be alive. There's SmackDown tomorrow. Right. Raw Which is, not is already taped. recorded. Raw's been recorded. And then that's it. That's it, folks. There's, that's all it, she wrote. NXT's not live next week either, right? Mm-hmm. I don't believe it is. Oh, that's a Christmas NXT. It can't be. Yeah, I think like, that's why last night was was as big as it was on both sides. And I'm assuming it's going to be hmm, nothing. Probably a recap show because I don't think AEW. That's taped, actually Christmas night. AEW didn't tape a show. No, they're raw taped. Raw, raw taped for raw Monday. Taped and then went live. Talk about an exhausted. No, I think they went live and then taped that late. I thought so. Oh my. I be- I thought so. I could be wrong. They were in. Where were they? On I thought they taped in that. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, but I I thought I remember seeing. I got a feeling Chelsea Green might wrestle. Like, I don't know. Like Justin Labar tweeted that um, when Raw went off the air, they're like, and now they're they're taping. It's not just Justin. It's Justin Labar. <laughs> well, because like theoretically, if you work in some like vignettes and stuff. Right, if you're just hitting matches, bam, 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 get yeah. them done, and then sure. because like sm- like uh, SmackDown tape. Now, when we were at the the one where The Rock was on, he had that long like 15 minute promo. Right, but like otherwise, it was pr- it because you don't, you quick. don't have commercial break. Right, so right. Um, I mean, you have a spot where it goes it goes dark, and the, you know, and then they and put then in a is, commercial. Right, um, and on also today, this is uh, from Wrestle Votes on Twitter. Heard recently John Cena wants to do something substantial at WrestleMania. More than just appearance like last year. Uh, he resides within the Tampa area, which uh, is making um, WrestleMania possibly more important to him uh, this coming year. Speaking also of people and being important and coming back, mm-hmm. uh, Mike Johnson of PW Insider was recently asked his thoughts about the rumors of Edge returning to the ring. He provided an interesting answer. Uh, he wrote, we've heard that Edge signed a new deal with WWE that was uh, that has a pretty nice upside. We also reported months ago he was in Pittsburgh for WWE business. And that's where the wellness policy head, Dr. Joseph Maroon, is headquartered. M- uh, my, meaning Mike Johnson's, uh, gut feeling is we'll see Edge in the Royal Rumble as a surprise and possibly even see him do a few matches over the next few years on major events. Um, he has denied doing anything, but the talk has persisted internally. Uh, that he's on his way back to the ring, and he and uh, and John, Mike Johnson of PW Insider believes there's something to it. Um, I also read a report today. I believe it was also uh, connected to this PW uh, Insider report that um, many people feel that they are they are much closer to a Edge return than a CM Punk return. 
So I don't know if there's any Cena versus Edge um, or anything like that, but that is definitely uh, something to watch. Uh, Lee commented here. He said that uh, Raw was live and then they taped the upcoming Good episode. Good God. They were in Des Moines. Okay. So they were... I think that's just an hour. That's an hour. So they're done at 10 and then they tape. All right, two hours. You're out at midnight. Hey, Alexa. What time is it in Des Moines, Iowa right now? In Des Moines, it's 9.17 p.m. Okay, so they're an hour they're behind, behind us. So we're all ended at 10. We can get out there by midnight. I mean, I know it's a, it's a little rough. I mean, are you going to watch Raw next week? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, I've already read the spoilers. Did you? Anything Anything of any substance? Chelsea Green wrestles. Oh, on Raw? Yeah. Yeah, she wrestles Charlotte. Interesting. Why are they doing like the NXT? I don't know. I don't know. I hate it. I really do. I love that them like we're seeing and being able to like see Deanna Perrazzo's well, awesome former, former guest. guest. Um, uh, Chelsea Green, also former guest. I just, I just hate that like that feels a bit like the wild card rule. And I get it's NXT and up, but if it's if it's brands and brands, like why would NXT who just won the brand supremacy want to share their talent on other stages? I don't know. And okay. if that's going to be the case, then to be like, hey, if you win the Survivor Series, your talent can share. Right, you're, you're going to show like, up. Interesting. I don't know. Okay. It's just an idea. I don't know. I don't. I don't make raw shows. So what the hell do I know? Um, I don't want to spoil a ton of stuff, but there's like three matches. I don't know. Maybe they'll cut some stuff, but there were three matches with local talent. Like three like squash matches. Alistair Black beats uh, a local talent. Whoop. I got a pop up. Buddy Murphy beats a local talent. <laughs> Eric Rowan beats a local talent in a squash match. Boring. Um, put it this way. I'm going to be drunk on Monday, so I will not be watching Raw. At least live. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, Alistair Black beats some dude in 10 seconds with the black mass. Buddy Murphy comes out to the stage, stares him down, and goes to fight some dude. Murphy wins in 10 seconds. Black then hits Black Mass on Murphy. So it's 10 second champ. It's right. It's it's two, two like 10 seconds. So the way it read, it sounded like there was multiple squash matches. And then obviously Rowan comes out and, and uh, a squash match. And we see No Way Jose. He'll be wrestling. No way. Jose. <laughs> um, Samoa Joe is involved it looks in like an it's, angle. It looks like it's passable. You, you probably don't have to watch. Zack Ryder wrestles. Oh, that's a good point. Devin says it was probably uh, students from Seth Rollins' school. Oh, perhaps. The, uh, was it the Black and the Brave or something? Uh, I don't know. The Brawny Paper Towel Man or something? Brawny. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, this this one is a little interesting, and then we can get into some uh, Wednesday Night War discussion. It was, uh, uh, was it Tuesday? Monday. Press release. AllEliteWrestling.com. All Elite Wrestling. Since selling its first ticket for Double or Nothing back in May, All Elite Wrestling announced today that it has reached the 100,000 live event ticket sold milestone. In just eight months, AEW has produced 16 live events, resulting in 91,222 tickets sold with an average of 5,701 tickets sold per show. With the upcoming shows currently on sale, which as of today accounts for another 14,081 tickets sold, their grand total ticket sales for the year is 105,303. This achievement is the latest in the string of successes. So for the groundbreaking wrestling league, do you find it weird that they keep calling it a new league? Mm, that it's, that it's, word just they, always sticks out to me. I mean, league is very sport. It is. So if that's what they're trying to distinguish themselves as, then yes. Fair. Okay. Just It, it has always caught me as, as different. Not bad, just different. Um, which is currently played to impressive crowds during its week, during its weekly Dynamite show on TNT and special pay-per-view events. Fans attending Dynamite and AEW, AEW's pay-per-view events experience an atmosphere second to none Ooh, in professional wrestling da- dazzling television audience Ooh. in the U.S. and abroad. After Dynamite started with a bang and as Wednesday's number one wrestling show and the biggest network debut on TNT in five years, the show has continued to build momentum. <laughs> reaching 30 million people in the first two months. To think one year ago, we hadn't announced the launch of AEW and our first show 
wouldn't occur until late in May. And today we are celebrating more than 100,000 live event tickets sold. It's been an incredible run and a credit to our talent, our partners at TNT, and our great wrestling fans for making it happen. So Tony Khan, president of and CEO of All Elite Wrestling, the best part is this is just the beginning. Um, first off, it's smart they got that... Uh, they smart they got that number one wrestling show line out on Monday. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let me, man, I, I think I sent this in the group chat that we have, and it just caught me so off guard because I feel like 100,000 tickets isn't anything that great. Like, and it sounds like I'm being nitpicky, and I'm going to compare it, and I get it's not going to be a good comparison. But the WWE, just this past year, and I get it, it's WrestleMania. The attendance for WrestleMania was like 82,000. Again, that's the people there with a reported, and this is a Meltzer number, a reported, so you can probably add some to it, a reported Meltzer number of 63,000 tickets sold right. for one event one. in the WWE. That is over half of what the AEW is bragging about. And I get, we've now talked to two pay-per-views and numerous live shows for them. Mm-hmm. So 100,000, is that is that something that is really... Braggable. And like, that's my question. Yeah, I, I, it it just seemed like a weird, like and really that's coming from me. This isn't Jim's right, thoughts. right, right. right. That, that, that was not me. Um, and here's the, like this, this is the number that stood out as as an average of five thousand seven hundred and one tickets sold per show. I think they've done a couple of arena. Like I know the 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 first night. The arena in D.C. was right. tw- like 22,000. Um, I know they did another one that was in the 16 to 18 range. So in two events, you have 30,000. And your average is f- like 5,700. Like maybe, just maybe, be a little bit more selective on the numbers that you're reporting. Maybe. You don't need to, you don't need to say that it's an average of fi- And here's the thing, like... Again, they are new. Again, a year ago today, there hadn't even been one actual All Elite Wrestling show. So I'm really not trying to sound like a dick. I really am not. But I wouldn't have reported 5,700 tickets. Because it is, as and uh, comparing it to WWE, to WWE shows, that doesn't sound like a lot. I mean, it's more than NXT. It is absolutely on a is day. more than NXT. However, let's go back and look at those NXT pay-per-views in the same time was it one or did they have two they've, they've had two so far AEW. so they've had two aew pay-per-views and that would be two nxt pay-per-views probably <sighs> those numbers well, yeah, prob- they're, they're tied to wwe weekend those, shows those numbers probably aren't that off because they're tied to StarCast, and that brings a lot of people out, too, because it's an event, and, like, yeah. people want to go to an event. That's why, like, we're seeing an uptick in concerts that are multiple days, like those festival-type right, things. Right, right, exactly. Right, because people want bang for their buck, and they want an event. They just don't want to go or to like, one thing. It's not thing. just Motley Crue touring. It's Motley Crue, Def Leppard. Um, Poison's on that ticket. Poison and uh, Joan Jett. And Joan Jett and the so Black it's a, yeah, so it's a, it's a, a great it's a, lineup. It's a it's a great four lineup. Would you be interested in seeing that? Oh, I plan on. You seeing plan it. on seeing I it. I plan yeah. on seeing that. It's a solid. Ticket. Um, I had never seen Motley Crue before, so I, I I do plan on seeing that one. Um, but man, yeah, like I mean, and don't get me wrong, like it 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 is a it is a achievement, and I'm not trying to shit on the achievement, but it just, it seemed like a really weird thing to to like brag about, right? It, it like. It, it it did. It's a weird thing. It really is. It's weird. Yeah. I, I don't know how else to say it. Right. It's it just, it, it is. For Mania 32, Jim, the attendance was over 100,000 with 80,000. And I get, again, I get it's something very different. This is definitely apples to oranges. But for the sake 100%. of the comparison, over 80,000 tickets for Mania 32. Right. Like. Which sucked. We will admit, like Mania Thirty Two was an awful Mania. I mean, the matches were good. The res- the, the results were were just a dumpster fire. Ugh, oh, that was, it was so bad. My least favorite Mania since the thirties. Yeah, in the thirties. Yeah, it's definitely yeah, definitely my least favorite for sure. network Mania. Um, yeah, it just. I was arguing with a guy on uh, on the Twitter. It's shocking. What? 
I know, Jim. You're gonna wait, be so people, proud of me. Wait, what? It was it was on Facebook, and it wasn't even an argument. It was just the the meme about like one year later because we we just passed the one year mark. I yeah, think I was yesterday. gonna br- I was gonna bring this up. Oh, okay. Uh, of like, did, did the WWE give you what you want? Like, we're gonna listen. To, I forget exactly what Vince said. We're gonna listen to the crowd. It, yeah, it was it was the segment a year ago where it was we're Sh- not having like Shane, Stephanie, Vince, and Triple Trip, H, right. and you know we're gonna give the fans what they want. And like they were just like mockingly putting it up there. And again, like I get nobody really wants the Bobby Lashley Rusev angle right now. That's not an angle that people are like clamoring to get at all. But, like, go back, and I had said, it's just such a dumb comment. Like, if you look at WrestleMania, they gave us pretty much everything the fans wanted. Do, do you want to hear We're talking, like, like, Seth Rollins. And let me let me find my post, because I think I, I yours s- was very similar I to what s- yeah, I had said. I saw a tweet from, from somebody. It said, uh, exactly one year ago this happened. Has WWE given you what you want? Feel free to be as brutal as possible. And this was stuff that I literally just took out, off of my head. I didn't do any research. Didn't really like dig into every month's show. I said, Kofi, Becky, and Seth at Mania. Hell, all of Mania. You have Viking Raiders as champs. Bray as Universal Chance Chant. Beating Seth Rollins, which people were ready for. Um, Raw, SmackDown, and Pay-Per-View have separate stages. Pyro is back. They're pushing new stars. They shut down Lacey Evans' push, even though it was a new star. Um, no more Shane. I say they're doing pretty well. I had put so this was two. This was today. I did that yesterday. Okay, oh yeah. Okay, this was two days ago when I responded because it was just it just rubbed me the wrong way. I said so. Everybody forgets WrestleMania. That was overall well liked. Some calling it a top three mania of all time, giving us almost all of the results we wanted. Becky, Seth, and Kofi. The Fiend currently is the champion, and NXT won Survivor Series. I said fans can be so fickle. The guy responds to me top three of all time. LOL, you must be on some good drugs. I don't know if that's a, a stretch at all. A top three mania? I'm not going to call it the best mania of all time, but I feel like 35 gave us everything we wanted and is a top three WrestleMania. Let, let me pull up because, like, granted, it, it was very long. And if there's one complaint I think people have, it's that it's very long. But you know what? Fucking plan for it. Make it an event. Have some food. Get delivery. Like smoke I, a joint, I do what you want to do. I was sick. Take a piss. I, I was sick, and I watched it start to finish, including kickoff show. Like by now, like my wife was here, right. but like she's not super engaged in that. She's not going to be super engaged with it for seven hours. But I, I stuck with it, and I had like the fucking flu. Right. Like if if and I can do I that with the flu, tell you how quick it went. Sitting in the stands watching it, like it Tony was Tony Nese one, which was something people wanted. K- Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder beat the revival, which people popped. For there was a hell of a freaking nuts. Um, I mean, Strowman won the battle royal, which like it, you know people Nobody figured it was going to happen. Um, Styles beat Orton. Um, I mean, Shane beating the Miz. I don't know if anybody wanted that except for like Matt because. He was being it's a, a dick. huge Shane. The mark. the two Conics won the fucking women's tag title. Right, that was a big pop. Uh, Kofi beating Daniel Bryan for the U- for the WWE Championship. Probably the pop of the night. Samoa Joe retained the U.S. title. Um, Triple H defeated Batista in what was a, in a in a match that was better than people expected it to be. Um, I mean Corbin defeating Angle, but you had like if you didn't see that coming, that's on you, not on WWE. Right. Um, I mean, Reigns McIntyre was an okay match. Yeah, it was fine. Um, the the uh, the Usos, the Fatal Four Way Tag Match for the SmackDown Tag Titles. That match was spectacular. Uh, the Demon Finn Balor, of course, beat Bobby Lashley. The Demon, right? Yeah, right. The Demon. You got the Demon at fucking WrestleMania, and Becky Lynch, of course, um, winning the uh, winning the two belts. Like that Mania gave you everything you fucking wanted, right? Like the big three was Rollins, Becky, right? Yeah, Kofi. Lesnar lost, right? Beast Slayer. You shocked everybody by opening Mania with that, and him losing, right? I mean, Seth got fucking shit kicked for like ten minutes before the match started, and still beat Brock Lesnar. 
I don't know how you look at that mania and not consider it close. No. And like you said, NXT three. won at Survivor Series. Right. The new Hello, band. NXT won at Survivor Series. Bray Wyatt is is universal champion and and is doing it in a way that I don't think anybody saw this coming. Right. Like if you like here's the thing. And and I I tweeted this out today. That promo segment with me, with the McMahons and Triple H, it was never meant to be. We are literally going to give you everything you ask for, because guess what, folks? That's literally impossible. Well, if you've ever been on, I don't know, Twitter during, I don't know, any wrestling show, you know it's impossible, right? Because re- re- every single week, every single wrestling show, I see somebody tweet out, "Hey." Uh, I didn't watch Raw last night. Is it worth it? Go ahead and read the comments right. when you see a tweet like that. Because you have things that, yeah, it was really good. Nah, it was okay. You could probably just read this boy. Worst Raw ever. Yep. Like, so you're not going to please this whole audience. And I'm not, like, it's just not possible. Here's some of the comments. This is from uh, one of the other pages. To be honest, fans don't really know what they want. Um, so quite frankly, it's tricky. Uh, you gave us AEW. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Um, let's get rid of all the talking and replay from all the other shows and bring back what uh, the program stands for, World Wrestling Entertainment. Unless you change the name to World Talking Entertainment. Um, There's been tons of Raws over the past couple of months that have had a shitload of wrestling and people crap all over them. Apparently, we wanted an absentee champion. So then the next person says, Becky, Kofi, Rollins, they gave us what we wanted. Right. Seth was there every week. Right. And guess what? You booed him because I didn't like what he said on Twitter. <laughs> right. Uh, but we didn't ask for the Lana Lashley shit. Well, that's true. Y- you're right. They gave me what I wanted. Like, it, people are back and forth. Overall, in the past year, WWE has given you what you wanted more than they haven't. And let me be honest with you. CM Punk is kind of back. Is back as close as it's going to be, and now that door's open again. Um, CM Punk is closer today than he was a year ago. Let me. There was something today to that come I noted. Back into a professional wrestling ring, and if he never does, fine. At least we see CM Punk in like wrestling adjacent mode, right? Like he doesn't hate it anymore. Um, I mean, I feel like the Lana thing he hates. Probably. <laughs> WWE on Fox tweeted, in our final best of the decade debate, we're asking you, what was your favorite WWE promo of the decade? Let us know in the replies below. Um, CM Punk quote retweeted though, and said, seriously, though, it's this. And it was the AJ Lee uh, pipe bomb. Oh. Blasting the stars of Total Divas. Um, to which WWE on Fox... Uh, like reply to GIF of when AJ Lee dropped the mic. You and hit then, me with the the GIF. GIF? Did I say you GIF? Just, you just said GIF. If we had rewind, I'd rewind it. <laughs> I've never heard you call it a GIF. A GIF or JIF? GIF? JIF? I don't I feel like you normally call it JIF. I probably normally do. It's a weird day. All right. Um, well, that and then. Uh, Not a big deal. I don't want to throw you off. And. <laughs> And I don't know, I don't know what it, I don't know, he must have been going back and forth with somebody because then he, like, he responded to it as well. But, like, the fact that you have CM Punk actively engaging with WWE, uh, with WWE on Fox, like. I'm just tickled about it. Like, that, like, that's a thing that happened. Mamma mia. In 2019. Um, yeah, there, like, there's, there's. I, I, and, and don't get me wrong. Again, th- there are things that have been bad, but like, look right now, Humberto Carrillo is being a, is a pushed new star. Right. Um, Andrade is getting prime time feature on on WWE TV every week. Let, let's talk about that too, because the gauntlet match frustrated a lot of people. I think you're one of them. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Because it was like 48 minutes yeah with a, a no finish correct right quick i mean i i believe am i i was frustrated it finished with the 
the move out on the concrete. Correct. And Andrade just left. Uh huh. And Humberto was on the the stretcher just when dead. they came back from commercial. Right. And then Seth Rollins is like, "I'm going to challenge you next week." Bye. Right. And I was like, "Why did I just watch that big old match?" Well, for nothing. I mean, when there was no finish, somebody had to step up. But there was a finish, according to WWE social medias. There so was. this is like the the issue I think you had with, with AEW. AEW I, I, yes, I, that one thing saying one thing, the results is right. That's where confusion sets. And you, in. I mean, blasted AEW for yeah, that. and WWE fucked up. Should be blasted for they this as well. Absolutely fucked up. Right. I mean, you weren't as bad as the other guy. That was in that tweet thread that we were stuck in. Oh, God. But this one, this one, I think, ruffled feathers that you tweeted out, Jim. And I don't think you meant it the way it came off. Maybe I'm Apparently. wrong. I feel like the way you said it, you said something along the line. And I, I don't remember exactly what the tweet was. Here's the problem. AEW folks thought that I was blasting AEW, which I was not. Correct. They took it as well. They I, took it as that because you brought it up and it didn't need brought up. You made a comparison that that didn't need to be made that moment. And then I was just trolling they, you. Well, yeah, I know the lady you, was I like know. rent free, and I'm like rent free. They set up shop. Uh, yeah, fuck they have that a bitch. permanent residence in Jim's um, head. But like, here's the thing. But the WWE fans do it too. A- AEW, you know, AEW does fans. it on their own TV. AEW fans do it all the time. All the time. Right. And they just took a ton right. of issue with you. And you likened a double count out, or I'm sorry, a time limit draw. Time limit draw. To what happened here in this gauntlet right. match. Right. And I know they are not exactly the same. Thing. Correct. But I, I don't think you ever said that they're exactly the same thing. No, I did not. What you, were, what you were getting to is we don't have a clear victor at Correct. the end of this match. And it's okay for AEW to do it and not okay for the W. I don't Correct. think you said it the greatest way because that's where I only most have so people. so many characters to work with. Right? I get that because everybody was like, these are totally different things. And you never said they weren't. Right. It's just the fact that we watch the match and we don't have a winner. We don't have a loser. Right. We have this. Right. But like. Which AEW does just as much as WWE does. Right. Maybe if the WWE would have turned the lights off before the gauntlet match. It would have made more Personally, sense. Personally, I appreciate a time limit in a match. That's something that I wish the WWE incorporated more. I'm I'm fine with the time limit in in the match. I'm I'm honestly I'm fine with the time limit draw. I get why there was a time limit draw. You're protecting people. Well, You're you protecting got it after both. like 16 quote tweets from the guy who kept telling you that they're doing it to protect them. Right. Right. And All the while you're like, al- I get it. Yes. Right. You're, he, you're also, not- he also missed what I what I meant when I said uh, maybe they just could have done another non-sanctioned match because, you know, that's a thing they do every week. Uh, yes, um, we're getting there. But like, yeah, that that was my point is, is uh, you know, but uh, and they do it as well. Hell, I mean, AEW regular, regularly brings up WWE in their t- promos on TV. So why why should me doing it on Twitter ruffle anybody's feathers? Right. But yeah, like like that was my thing. And here's the thing: if if they just if they do it and they do a non finish, and Seth just goes, ah, "I'm gonna fucking be like if Seth would have just came out during like the last two and been like, guys, you're doing this for nothing. Um, I'm, I'm I'm just gonna wrestle. I'm just gonna wrestle anyway. Well, first it's gonna get Seth heat, so it does at least make some logical sure. sense. But like this one, um, it, 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 it there was a means to it. It continues a story mm-hmm. that has been told over the past few weeks. Uh, with it with Andrade and 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 Humberto, so like, guess what? You you fucking I think it was a DDT on, in the concrete. Right. Like, you shouldn't get up from that. That's very correct. Like, and because it was a ref stoppage, which I mean WWE's kind of gone to that well yeah, a little bit lately. A little bit. But it was it was a ref stoppage due to injury. Like, w- what else is supposed to happen? There's not a winner in that situation. Well, there would be if the one guy can't continue the other guy would be the victor, like a UFC-style fight. If the ref stops the this fight because sports someone... This I get Ryan. it. I get it. Um, Devin said it, it made no sense, but got people some TV time. There was a, there was so much good wrestling in that gauntlet match. There was good wrestling. Tons of it. But I also feel like, Jim, you're really critical of the AEW long matches for no reason, which ultimately that's what this became, a long match for Right, but no WWE doesn't do that 
for every match right. every week. Yeah, but AEW like does not match unquirking 46-minute matches either. Well, nah, I mean, man, they're, getting, yeah, they're, they're getting close. They're get, I mean, uh, I Omega mean, can only point so many times. And here's the deal. They only have two hours. They this do. This is a three-hour so, show. So a 25-minute match on a two-hour show is actually longer than a 45-minute match on a three-hour show. Right. And right. since AEW always does the the com, like the commercial pit picture and picture yes. then it's even longer in my mind which <laughs> guess what if, if if it's during a match i'm fine with it if it's just sammy guevara walking around backstage you know what i don't need just to just put it. the commercial just up. put the commercial right. up it's fine i gotta go pee anyway i'm not gonna like i think the same thing with anything if it's in the wwe and you were just gonna see rest holds for three minutes just fucking go to commercial right right like that's that was the beauty of the commercial right. i don't need to see mojo raleigh Work a chin lock on Zack Ryder <laughs> right, while you're exactly. on a commercial break. Exactly. Um, Just show some popcorn, come back. But right, yeah, like, I- exactly. Um, but yeah, it, it, dude, like, I've actually, like, and I almost tweeted this, but I, I just, I didn't feel like dealing with with another bitch to block me then. And, right, we, we got blocked by somebody. Um, yeah, real hard ass. Somebody had a theory that it's Brad she- one of Brad Shepard's, uh, <laughs> you know, um, burner accounts. Uh, wouldn't shock me either. That was it was that some chick name, right? It was a it was a female. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Brad Shepard burner accounts. But like, I, know, I, we should just create a Twitter called that at Brad Shepard's burner account. I like that. I might do that and just like snarkily tweet how good AEW <laughs> is. Um, we'll just we'll just Matt's not here. We'll just let Matt tweet from there, like all of his positive thoughts. <laughs> um. <clears throat> but I uh, and again, it sounds like we're I burying. actually almost debated, like saying, like, look, when I'm gonna when I'm comparing or like talking about AEW, I'm just gonna like tweet WEA, just <laughs> so the people vanity searching AEW right. don't have the opportunity to jump into my fucking shit. I don't know how much it was a vanity show. I mean, it got it got shared pretty good. Well, no, because I think I, no, I, I I'm and and this is what I assume happens because the the. The quick because the people that were responding don't follow us. Correct, they were right, and it, it happened so quick that what I assume is happening is during Monday Night Raw or SmackDown, P, like AEW super fans are vanity searching AEW or AEW Dynamite or whatever, and when if they see something negative, they just jump right into it. Like I'm assuming that's what happens. All right. And here's the deal. Like, I was looking at the numbers. There's not a ton of numbers on that either. Like, we tweeted some shit that's gotten some really good. Because you can look at. Oh, yeah. Like, the the, the, the statistics performance, of a tweet. Right, yeah. or whatever. Like, there are some really good numbers <laughs> we pull. This one was like, meh. No, because it was people with 13 followers. And that they follow all the Unfortunately, all I, th- you're, I feel like you're right. I- I'm telling you. that That's exactly what happens. because, And I've dealt with it. A, a few times, and and it's not yeah, a, we tweet so much. We do. We I, we tweet a lot. Um, it's kind of like our thing, or at least my thing. Um, but like, I'm telling you, it like if you tweet something that you that anybody can even perceive negative about AEW, it, it is it is just it just jumped on by certain people in that fan base. Like it it is unbelievable. Like I, and I'm and. I, I'm not even trying to be like, uh, they're they're 12 year olds in their mom's basement. No, it's just, it's people that are right. This tweet has less than 2000 impressions, which is like borderline average for us. Right. Because the people quote retweeting it have 13 followers. Correct. And they're all AEW super fans. And, and, and here's the thing. The reason why that, I feel like that fan base more than, and I'm not, I'm not saying like the WWE fan base or anything like that within the wrestling Twitter community um, is, is like, is not also crazy and mature and, and uh, very overreactive, but I feel like the AEW one is worse. And I, and the only reason I say that is because like Matt Jackson will block people for just talking about them. I think right. he's a vanity searcher. Um, Kenny Omega <clears throat> is a tweet and deleter. Like yeah, Cody Rhodes is sure. a tweet and deleter. Like Cody Rhodes will like, and and Br- like Brandy is 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 
really bad on social media for being the chief brand officer sure. of a company. Um, Tony Khan, not really now, the best. Now, where at exactly do they rent? In your head again, just somewhere right point to that here. spot. No, but it, like it, it's it, it here's is. my point about statistics. You had a tweet about if you actually think Ricochet is an actual superhero, you're wrong, uh, and that was about him like responding to a guy who just took a picture of it and snapped mm-hmm. it. That has five likes, one comment, so not very much. It has the exact same impressions as the one that had like multiple likes, right. and multiple retweets, and multiple people comments. responding, right? To because we're dealing now, with Kate really, Ricochet really? did like that. Oh, did he? By the way. Did he really? Yeah. Go in to see who liked it. Go ahead. I'm trying to. It's not working. It's not working. Come on now. Um, oh, WWE resident superhero at King Ricochet. Like, and, and, cause, but like, here's the thing is, is I feel like that the, the brass at AEW has helped create that monster. With More like their, the ass, am I right? Uh-huh, um, has created that monster that is that fan base. Because. Here's th- the deal. They're passionate. They are maybe not passionate enough to watch every week um let's talk about wednesday night wars let's talk about that <clears throat> from this week though um the <laughs> nxt won in rating numbers well, overnight dvr numbers and that that magical word that alvarez and Meltzer love to bring up every week the key demographic they won aw won or uh, nxt won across the board this week NXT had the far superior show this week. Oh, it wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. AEW is not good this week. And and like I, f- I feel like Alvarez already was chirping. Of course he was. It took you to bring a main star down to the roster, starting off with your championship match and ending like with a women's title change to beat the week. Dude. Uh, uh. Who gives a shit what it took? AEW's if, like, if first game... champion is literally a guy who made his name in WCW WWE. Right. Like he is he's right. starting a feud with former Shield member <clears throat> John Moxley. Right. The only other guy that gets to promo in your company is fucking Cody Rhodes. MJF. Shut up. At, oh yeah, sorry, MJF. But week to but week, he's the only other like quote home groaner that's n- right i hear you like shut up alvarez like just i, yeah, I, I want to see, I wanna see if i can find it it has to be up there close uh sh- sh- oh, maybe it was just in replies um i definitely saw it oh maybe he was doing it maybe he was getting out ahead of the uh oh maybe that's what it was i don't know maybe it wasn't alvarez it's weird that he also has a book that has that WWE word on it that's so vile that, like, helped him sell copies of his book. Funny how what all that stuff kind of works. Um, <clears throat> a- I did not like AEW um, overall. Again, like, uh, Jazz Hands McGee. I, I, do, I do love Hangman Page. You call him Jazz Hands McGee. Yeah, I do love, I do love Hangman Page. Um, I'm trying to- I never really realized how big of a star Hangman could be until AEW. Yeah, no. Like and I'll admit that like I was wrong on on Hangman. Yeah, he's he's got star written all over all him. over him, dude. He 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 definitely does. Um why who okay, who <laughs> who sits in a locker room by themselves with headphones on just staring at the wall? I don't know. Okay. Al Snow? Um, apparently Nakazawa does. Oh. Like, did you see that where where Pac Naka, Naka, Nakazawa where Pac like came on the yeah. screen is like I'm going to show you what I can do and he right. goes in the locker room and Nakazawa's just sitting there staring at the wall on a chair like he was getting hit- ready for his match that he wasn't booked in right I, I like can I tell you this and this is this is this is again it sounds like I shit on AEW and here's like really proof that I don't I prefer AEW Dark over the TV show I, have I feel not like watched I feel like the yet. matches are better. They're more my speed and my style of matches. I really do prefer that. Are they more indie like? They're just less like bullshit. Like they're and again, I'm not calling their main product bullshit, but their main product they're trying to like. Man, I don't know what it is. It's more wrestling. Okay. I just I just prefer dark. Give it a watch. I mean, and there are other other characters too. Like I feel like we're kind of seeing the same folks all the time. 
on Dynamite. Uh, Devin said he enjoyed Jungle Boy versus Chris Jericho. I, I did enjoy. I will. I, I will agree. I did enjoy that. Dude, it was great. Will Jungle Boy tap out? We're nearing the ten. The crowd was engaged again. I'm never going to take away from their crowd. They've got a great fan base. Counting from ten, he hangs in there. Jericho throws his fit and then walks out because he doesn't need to do it. That's great heel shit. It is. Um, I, I I did think that the submission spot started to like it just felt like he was in that for for way too long because it, and again it comes down to size and suspending disbelief blah blah, blah but if you're chris jericho aw world heavyweight champion and you have you know 70 pound jungle jack perry uh in in your finishing submission hold for that long and you can't beat him how's it going to beat anybody Jim, that's a good point. Like if I'm just just Without trying reaching to think a rope or something, right? Like just trying to think through it. But I get it. You know, he's 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 almost there. He's almost you know. It, it's it's creating a star, creating a baby. Face. I, I actually did enjoy sure. that match. Um, the the butcher, the baker, and the the pumpkin pie maker, Come whatever the hell on, their name Jim. is. Jim, it's, it's um, uh, uh, the butcher and the blade. Yes, with the bunny. Yeah, sorry, I, I get him confused, Ryan. I really do. You're unreal. Um. You know, it's really good that uh, I think last week it was Excalibur called them uh, one of the greatest tag teams in the world, and they lost to that world-renowned championship-winning tag team of Cody Rhodes and 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 uh, Darby Allen. You're just sour on Darby Allen. It's not even that. How are, how is this world-renowned great tag team losing to Cody and Darby Allen? Right, a, t- a guy never tagged before. I mean, Cody is a bona fide star. He is, and and. And Darby Darby's, can skateboard uh, to the bottom of the ramp. A star on the rise. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. Um, it and, took, but you it know took, what? It's, it it's, took all their finishers, though. Cody had to, like, hit his finisher, and then the coffin drop from Darby, and then another finisher to then pin the blade. Wasn't the coffin drop to the guy who wasn't the legal man? Yeah. I mean, the, right, so that, I mean, the Cody that got kick, him out of there. What is Cody's kick called? I forget. The chick kick? Uh, uh, um, yeah, I'm just uh, kidding with you. <laughs> Like uh, I, I, I feel like uh, I don't the, know. They the, had to the eat the, they had to eat the finishers to get the job done. I don't know. Sure, uh, but it seems weird. <laughs> I hear you. Like this hot brand new tag team, and they lose week lose two, to just two p- single stars, right? But you know what? It was for that that tremendous rematch of of Cody versus Darby. And don't get me wrong, the Cody Darby was actually a really good match. It's, so they team Cody Darby says, "Hey, if you guys can if win, you win, you can get a you, you can, get Darby gets his rematch." Again. Um, at a later date. Oh, so like it's not going to be. Well, yeah, it's not like, next week, right? Because there's no shows. There's next no week. show, but it is January first. Oh, so two weeks. Yeah, dude, that's going to be a big show, though. That's like their, it that's is, their Jacksonville show. It's every, hot shot. They it's, should just call it hot shot wrestling. It's Jacksonville, James. They should throw everything they can at this show. Like this should be the show where they like easily beat NXT. Yeah, and if they don't. Because this should be like yeah, their like homecoming show, right? Yeah, this is January home- one. This yeah. is a big thing for us. Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I get it. Just, it should be big. But like, here is the thing: if you just if you want to if you want to have that big thing, just you know have have Cody and Darby last for a while, lose the match, and then Cody's like, you know what? Uh, <clears throat> I was skeptical about this. I am going to give you my rematch at our at our homecoming in Jacksonville, January first. So that's how you would have booked that's it. That's how I would have booked it. Kept the new tag team going. Fuck yes. That's fair. Um, you think it hurts the Butcher and the Blade? It certainly doesn't help. And the Bunny. I mean, it, it's not going to hurt them in the eyes of the audience that they're I think for. you're right, actually. That's a good point. Like, I mean, And I don't mean to be that way, but <clears throat> it's you're not going to hurt them to their audience. That's fair. Because their audience, at, at least at this point, will accept everything you give them. It's 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 the 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 shine. You're not wrong. The, Jim. the shine's still there to, to the the major AEW audience. They're they're not they're not going to bark up at you yet. I do say yet, um, Jim. You are you are right. And then the that main event was not as good as I expected it to be. Yeah, that was a big time letdown, and the ending went over like a fart in church. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> There it was. Jim, you're... Man, you're right. I don't know what they can do, but I don't know if you can get the Dark Order over. You can't. Like, I don't I'm sorry. Think, you I mean, can't. 
we're talking that AEW audience is not buying into these guys. Nope. The creepers, they're not buying into any of it. Like the vignettes were the vignettes were a little creepy. I'll give it that. It's it's like a mix between like the Wyatt family and um I don't think the announcers buy into it or really know how to talk about it, so they're doing a really tough job selling it yeah, to your at home crowd as well. Like that's a struggle to me to like believe that Jim Ross or Excalibur like are really putting the Dark Order over. And maybe that's just me reading into it. Dude. But I just don't like the Dark Order. But it's like the Church of Scientology meets the Wyatt family. That's right. Like that's kind of what I feel like with uh, it. Um, and here's the thing too. Like I love Jim Ross. I, I really do. Like uh, him, him and the King in the in the Attitude Era, I, were, and 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 even beyond. Like it was such a good pairing. Um, and I know, like I know Jr. Like he's had a, obviously a rough stretch between the Bell's palsy, um, and and obviously with with his wife his passing wife away. Right, yeah. Um, but ah, oh, dude. He just and I know people were very critical of him uh, on the commentary for the New Japan stuff on Correct. Access, um, and I didn't watch a lot of it, so I, I didn't I didn't really get what they were saying because when he did like the the May Young classics and stuff, I, I thought he was fine. Like, and I get like he's not going to be like 1997. I feel JR like the New again. Japan stuff we kind of gave him a pass because like some of the names are tough and it's, right. I would have know, trouble like, right, um, but. Man, there are just so many points where I'm, and I don't know if it's a Jr. thing or if it's a production thing because you can you can hate Michael Cole and WWE commentary, yeah. but here's the thing: like you're gonna find very few instances where like the guys just seem lost. That like, I there's agree been with. So, like there was like one point last week I don't remember what match it was in, uh, but like Excalibur said something and Jr. I think literally was just like. Yeah, sure. I don't know. Fair, right. and you could tell that it wasn't. But I feel like that's like a Jr. thing. Like he's just at but that it like age. wasn't prompted. Yeah, like, right. And, and and I feel like you see that though with with newer commentary, like Dio Madden. I think struggled a bit. Sure, when he was added to Raw. Yeah, he was very felt, he was very clunky. voiceless. <laughs> um, so but but a couple weeks into TV now, a month, two months into TV, we should be. Really getting that that that, and I don't know who's play by other. play. Like I feel like you have three play by play guys. And okay, they're, they're, I hear they're that. stepping on each other That's a lot. Fair. Um, I also hate that Tony Schiavone is a uh, is like a, you know, is an interviewer. An interviewer. Um, and I get like Michael Cole or Jr. will do it sometimes. Right, too. they'll step into the ring to do it, but, but like, like it's announced when they do that. This this time, I think you're talking about when Schiavone. Uh, just met yeah, him up with the, the ski of own right up at the top of the ramp. Yeah, he just kind of like walked away from Brock. He wasn't. He wasn't like, "I'll be back. I'm going to go get." Like it just seemed that seemed right, you didn't, or you didn't hear the headset. But, <laughs> you know, right. like the headset hitting the table uh, moment. And 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 like I'm 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 trying not to be super critical, but this week felt like a company that was very new. And I saw a lot of Twitter comments about that. Like, I think even some AEW folks will admit, like, this wasn't our wasn't greatest our week. Wasn't right. our best. And th- there's nothing wrong with admitting that. Right. You're going to have down weeks. And here's the deal. If you're going to have a down week, you might as well have a down week when NXT is going to have an out. up week. Right. One last thought about AEW. I love what they're doing with Chris Stratla- Stratlander. Yes. I think she is a star. We need to strap a rocket to her and go. I think they um, are. <laughs> I think, and I, here's the struggle already. If they see that and they're like, all right, let's move on this, get it off Rio. Like, you can't. On January one, because that's when this match is happening, because she is the number one contender. Yeah, put the belt on her right away because it feels like it's a knee jerk reaction to what we just saw at NXT well, going into Christmas. Like, do you know what I mean? We have a week off, and then we're going to copy what NXT did. Like, they're damned if they do, and they're damned if they very don't. Very true. In this but spot. And, and also, like, why did Chris Statlander, who had one match, um? Which actually, I guess, in terms of win loss record, would actually put you at the top of the women's division in AEW. Um, but one match, like I think it was the day she got signed or before she got signed, right. actually. Um, then you end up becoming the number one contender yeah. and the champion all within three weeks. And I think that's the problem with saying, like, this is sport, wins and losses will absolutely matter because there has to be a level of, like, oh, this chick's hot. Right. And. We really thought Britt Baker would be our gal, 
But like something's not connecting right now. I'm not saying it's never going to connect, but right she's now, the dentist, right? Right now, the dentist, okay, Brick Baker, is it, she's just not connecting. She's a DMD, no. Jim. Brick uh, yes. Baker, DMD. Yes, Doctor Brick Baker, not connecting. Yes, she's a dentist. So we have to figure something out. Here comes Chris Stratlander. Wow, the fans are really behind here. Let's strike while the iron's hot, and that's something we always want the WWE to do, and they're always really slow to do it. Sure, think like. Braun Strowman two years ago. The right. guy's hot as hell. Oh, God, we got to do something with him. He cools off. Eh, I don't care. And then he wins, like, the Alibaba Baba Battle Royal. <laughs> like, it just, you know what I mean? It didn't strike when the iron was the hot. What so Battle Royal? The Alibaba Baba Battle Royal. The Alibaba Battle I can't even say Ali it. Alibaba Battle Royal? That's the one. That's the one. That's the one that he won. He That's won the, the green one. belt, remember? He never defended it. The green belt with the swords on it. No, no, no. I, I, I don't think that cleared customs. <laughs> <laughs> Did not. So, like, good good on AEW for, like, striking when it's hot. Sure. But that goes against what you're saying with wins and losses and, like, experience having to matter. Remember when I said... Because, Jim, it's still sports entertainment. Rem- it's right. Still- remember, remember when I said that having wins and losses, like, kept track of was going to be something that was, was going to be very scrutinized and yes. easily scrutinized. I wasn't saying it. To be negative Nancy and shit on AEW. I was saying it because there's a reason why no wrestling company up until now has ever tracked wins and losses like that. Because it's illogical. Right. It is so illogical. Like, because, yeah, you like, and the same thing with fucking Jungle Boy and the, the, you know, speaking out of both sides of your mouth. Website says one thing. Cody Rhodes replies to a tweet, another thing. Um, but as the website read, now I didn't check it since last Tuesday night. But as of last Tuesday night, the recap from two weeks ago read that Jungle Boy's match was a title match. Right, right. On the website. Not AEW's Not website. WrestlingObserver.com. Not PWMania.com. Not PWPPonderings.com. No. AllEliteWrestling.com. It, it read that Jungle Boy's match was a title match. Oh, elite wrestling. Like, he was 0-8. <laughs> Here's the thing. You want to put Jungle Boy in a match? You want to put Jungle Boy in a title match? I don't care. But he when he's 0-8, that's when I care. I also care when your wins and loss records aren't correct. I'm going to pull that. I want to try and find that and pull that up. Just I think it. the others are correct. I think Matt or Tim Tim described that accurately. That that the others are like the three ways the, the multi-man matches. Right, but why can't you? Like, there's, there's no, there's nothing on there that explains that though that that that's maybe that's maybe part of part of my problem with it as well so the wwe still has andrade has won the gauntlet match and has a future opportunity for the u.s title yeah that's a problem on their on their site that's a problem yeah that 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 is a big problem and i saw some pictures of like aew crowd did you see that today a lot of empty upper sections sure you know here's the deal it's corpus christi when I think of wrestling towns, Corpus Christi is not the one that comes to mind. I feel like WWE doesn't even run Corpus Christi for that reason. Right. Right. I mean, they... they and I get AEW was thinking smaller, fine, but Corpus Christi is a really tough sell. Uh, let's see here. Um, all right, here we go. I found it. Le Champion, the AEW world champ, Chris Jericho, with Big Hurt, Jake Hager by his side. Boy, what a prick that guy is, by the way. Jake um, Entered the ring to get things off his chest. Jericho said they sold 12,000 bottles of a little bit of the bubbly uh, in one week. Let's see here. Hold on. I got to hit that. I got to hit that uh, bump. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. There it is. Um, In one week, uh, the Le Champion said that AEW is forcing him to have one more match that they... They changed it. Did they change they it? They finally changed it because as even as of a week ago. Now, these are the results from December 4th. Even as of a week ago, it's an AEW is forcing him to have another one more title defense. Right. Wow. So, three weeks later, they finally changed it. Look at it. that, Jim. Good job. Your voice was heard. Your voice was heard. 
little bit of the bubbly. Hope I get to hear that Rocky music uh, this Sunday. Um, Lee says uh, in the comment section that he would really have no issue if AEW just quietly got rid of the wins and losses. Oh, deal. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be elated. Yeah, I'd be fine with it. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. Well, they for get, me they get reset. That's fine on New Year's Eve. I'm all right with that. Right, two months into them, they get reset. I'm fine with that. But then we'll have a whole year of them. Yikes! I mean, it should. They should reset. It shouldn't be. Right, you know, I just think, in permanent I just think they should be reset at like their WrestleMania, which is double or nothing. That's fair. But if you're going to do it January 1st every year, and we know that, fine, whatever. So, uh, yeah, win loss records will reset. Let's let's transition here, and I'd like to read you a uh, a quote from a, a news article from a, a pretty large news site, um, Forbes. Have you heard of Forbes? I think I've heard They're of Forbes. They're a thing. Yeah. You've heard of Forbes. Um, and again, this is a contributor's opinion who's writing this article. The opinion in the Forbes, when you type in NXT or AEW, this is what you get. WWE NXT obliterates AEW Dynamite in final rating showdown of 2019. I mean, you're not That's wrong. That's the headline. They're not wrong. I write about men in tights and the money they make for men in suits. <laughs> That's that's the guy's like I bumper. like her. I like but, it. But um, Forbes magazine, WWE NXT obliterates AEW Dynamite in final rating showdown of 2019. That is a wave of momentum I would want to be riding if I was the WWE. Um, you know, I I know we, like we talked about it um, going into the first AEW episode back in October, and we said like if if, if AEW loses the first night. They have a major problem. Yes. Um, they won the first night. They won for, like, I think the first six or seven weeks straight. Yep. Um, but now all of a sudden, in the, in the past month, uh, I think NXT has won three times and now has won the key demo. This was the first time, I believe, they've won that, that coveted First time they won the, demo, the 18 to 49 demo. Which is really only about advertising sales. Right. All, all of these numbers sure. only matter to advertisers and networks. It means I, mean, I feel like it's a way that we can compare the two. Sure. Yeah. Right. It's, it's the, the only way. Right. Um, but, like... I mean, objectively, you can prefer one or the other. Yeah. But objectively, more people tuned in and watched NXT. And objectively, if you thought AEW was a better show last night, you were wrong. (laughs) You know, I can side with that opinion. I Um, don't know. If you look at even segment to segment, there probably wasn't much that AEW beat NXT. Because NXT put together a damn near flawless show last night. And that's why I said, like... And I'm not, and again, it wasn't a trying to shit on AEW thing, but I'm like, if AEW wins Wednesdays every week forever, you're literally beating the third brand. And I, not that WWE doesn't want NXT to be important, but they're literally the third brand. And, but I'm like, if, if WWE really, really wants to turn that switch, they're going to beat you. If they really want to, they're going to beat you. Well, guess what? WWE wants to beat you. And we've seen that over the last month because you've seen since Survivor Series when NXT won. Ever since then, NXT has been the stronger program on a weekly basis. And they've won three out of the four weeks. And now they've captured that ma- that key demo. Like, it, it, AEW has two weeks. Mm-hmm. To put together their homecoming show, their big show down in Jacksonville, yep. January first, kicking off the new year, records are wiped clean. I, I I will say the same thing about January first. That should be pay per view caliber for it them. It should be. I say the same thing about that show that I said about their debut show. If you lose January first, mm-hmm. you, you have a problem. You need to put on a pay per view caliber yeah. show there. Um, is, is Jericho mock? I don't think uh, is, has anything been announced for that show? I believe yet? Chris Strat, Strat, the, 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 yeah. Stratlander. Strat, yes. Stratlander. Um, Rio, I believe is happening. And then obviously Darby Cody, I think would, would, would be the other one that is happening for sure. But like it, I think it really is that important. And did, did NXT go up? 
NXT went up this week. NXT went up. Because, I mean, a lot of people, obviously, there there is a lot of political stuff happening. There is. I, I'm not going to discredit that. Um, that there's, there's political stuff. There's a ton of political Holiday stuff. stuff. There's a ton of holiday like people stuff. Are, people are already beginning to travel. Right. People are out shopping. And if that's people the case. People are out looking at lights. Both shows should have taken a hit. Agreed. You know, but, but NXT did something different. Counter program, whatever you want to call it, to go up. Yeah, and they went up. I don't know how much they went up. Again, I don't really care. Yeah. I'm looking at this from a week-to-week perspective. If AEW has a better show, I'm willing to sit here on Three Count Thursday and say, dude, AEW had a better show. Sure. Last night, NXT by far had the better show. Oh, it, it wasn't even close. It really wasn't. And, man, that main event, that – but first off, off, the opening match – Spectacular. Right. Cole defeating Finn Balor. Great. With a Gargano a Johnny return. Johnny Gargano return. Oh, are you kidding me? Give me, me? that feud. Um, Rhea Ripley, Shayna Baszler. That match um, had me edge of my seat. I think it was like a 20-ish minute oh, match. So good. God. Somebody, somebody I'm brought... I'm so happy for you, too, because I know you were pretty sour on Shayna Baszler. I, I had to been start. For a long this time, was man. a while she's, ago. She's come around big time with me in 2018, 2019. Um... And Rhea Ripley, like, oh my I don't know if I saw the star she could be six when she months was in ago. The UK, the no. UK. Uh-huh. I mean, I knew she was going to be big. Like, she's she's a big girl. Right. She's, she's a tall. I mean, oh, god damn, do I love Rhea Ripley? She is. She's incredible. And and I somebody brought up and I and I saw a great tweet. Um, it, it, they said that um, you know Shayna kind of carried. She was the last. Of, like, NXT being the developmental, not-on-TV brand. Sure. And now, like, this is, like, really a signifier that um, it's, it's, it is it's something different. And Rhea is, like, carrying it into a Fair. new Love era it. or whatever. And that is a great point. Like, I don't think it's long before Shayna Baszler and the rest of the horsewomen um, are, are uh, in... On, on either Raw or SmackDown, reuniting with a Ronda Rousey with a Ronda Rousey return, like I think that is coming. Like I think that's a potential mania. Yeah, spot I think we're going to see the four horsewomen versus the four horsewomen. Eventually, that'll happen. This was a great tweet at uh, or it's Danny it's at D A J O S C eleven. Hey, Danny. Um, he said the NXT Women's Titles established six years, six months. There have only been nine total champions, ten total reigns. The average reign. Is two hundred and forty seven days. Jim, I saw that tweet today and that, I did a little bit of research. Okay. Um it went page in June thirteen to April twenty fourteen when it was vacated when she got called up. Right. Okay. Uh tournament. Charlotte won the tournament in April or I'm sorry, in May of twenty fourteen. She carried it to February twenty fifteen. So into the next calendar year. Sasha Banks won it from her. Bailey won it from her. Asuka won it from her. Ember Moon won it from her, carrying it from November of 27 to April of 2018. Longer than I actually remember Ember yeah, Moon. Yeah, wow, okay. It. Yeah. Sheena Baszler uh, originally won it from uh, Ember Moon, carried it uh, from April to August of 2018. Kyrie Sane had the shortest reign, carrying it from August to October of 2018. Sheena retained it. Or got it back. Like three months is the short. Like, and you're gonna That's have short, short reigns. Like, uh, two months: August, September, October. Okay, okay. no, three two months. Reigns. Yeah, two and a half. Um, Shayna won it back in October of 2018, carrying it for over a year to December 2019. Damn. And then Rhea Ripley just won it. But like, let me put that into perspective. And this was from the 2013, the Raw. Women's Championship, Jim, uh-huh. was established in 2016. Okay. From from the brand split. Uh, had 15 reigns between seven different superstars. Now the SmackDown Women's Championship was created after that because Raw right. got the Women's Championship. Um, after that, then the tournament September 11th, 2016, is when the SmackDown Women's okay. Championship debuted when Becky Lynch won it. Jim, there has been 17 reigns of that championship three between years. eight different champions in three years, compared to the 10 in six years. For, so yes, they're doing it right now. I, I will say this, and it has popped into my head. Um, up until October of this year, NXT has been a pre-taped weekly show. 
Sure, that's true. So there, you're going to see now that not that they didn't do title changes, it didn't happen very often because it was pre-taped. Um, you're right. So now. I, it is going to be an interesting kind of case study to see how NXT does and handles title changes. Now that they're on TV. Now that they're on weekly two-hour TV. That's a great point, Jim. Um, now, I don't think they're going to start hot-shotting titles and, you know, bouncing them back and forth between the same two people, uh, you know, every other week or anything yeah, like that. Might. I mean, they could. <laughs> I hope they don't. I hope they don't. Um, but uh, that'll that'll be something to watch as well. But, I mean... That main event, the whole show. Um, CBS gave it a, a, an A for that main for that main event. Do uh, also on the show, Damian Priest taking on Killian Dane. All right, little match. Yeah, I love Damian Priest entrance. I think it's really cool with really the arrow good. and the strobes. Um, they announced the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classics coming love back. Love it. Love it. What else would they do? Right. Why? Well, you're not going to change. Well, the name. I mean. And you can't deny Dusty's like impact on take on NXT. No. So like you still honor him, even though like Cody, you know, whatever, you still honor him. Um, well, Cody's Cameron, not a Rhodes, you know. Oh, that. that's true. That's true. Can't be. Uh, Cameron Grimes defeated Kushida. Like a little I surprising. I'm a little all surprising. in for for Cameron Grimes. I, I really really love, really love it. Yeah. I liked Trevor Lee. I love the whole country strong sort of thing that he's doing yeah, I, love, shit. I love it i absolutely love it <laughs> uh eo shirai defeated santana garrett really fun little match which was a fun quick little match but i liked it pete dunn travis banks we're seeing a lot of travis banks yeah which is pretty yeah. cool um and then they had a big dakota kai well, not a big but a dakota kai interview segment but uh man that two hours felt really fast to yeah. me yeah um then when i went and i watched i watched nxt live when i went back and i watched aew i kind of went the other way it felt AW felt long to me. Like it, it was a long two hours, it, it and was, I I felt like wanting to fast forward. And again, I guess that's the it the, was every bit of two hours. The unfortunate part of of DVRing something is you can just skip and fast forward. Um, but but boy, NXT beat them last night. There's I will yeah. never I will I'm gonna call it like I see it. Last night was NXT's night. Yeah, it really was. Uh, just a couple other things here before we wrap up. Um. I, I noted this. I, I forget the uh, I forget the Twitter account that I that I saw it from, um, but it's an interesting note on on the fiend and the Bray Wyatt character uh, of the fiend. Um, WWE is seemingly booking at an interesting concept for the fiend's defeated character. They're experimenting with the idea that every time the fiend defeats his opponents, they return to their former selves. Finn Balor returns to NXT. Seth Rollins turns heel. Daniel Bryan returns as kind of the American dragon. Brian Danielson. Uh, WWE is quietly turning superstars to their former selves as a way to refresh their characters. The concept comes from the, free, the Fiend's hurt or heel. Uh, gimmick that the Fiend wears on his gloves. WWE what? is telling a very intricate story. that If you go against the Fiend, he will hurt, defeat you, and then heel, revert your character. Now, whether or not WWE is actively doing this, if they're not, they need to figure out who like hypothesized this and fucking sign them up to be a writer because right? that's brilliant. Fucking brilliant. You know how deep that is? Dude. There's... And I feel like we talked about The Fiend having these really, really deep, the Bray Wyatt having these really deep things about him. Oh, my God. It's, fu- it's Jim, I love it. It's fu- it's, it's banana. It's almost like giving me goosebumps. It's banana. I am so into the Bray Wyatt character. It's, dude, and like... I loved Bray Wyatt at TLC. Oh, him coming and out? And I feel like a lot of people didn't really get what was happening. Oh, it was so good. Like, Because I was like, what music is he going to come out to? What's he going to wear? Why wouldn't he come out to the Firefly Funhouse theme? And he just Firefly came Fun out to the Firefly Funhouse theme. theme, and he wore the sweater, and like he was he was happy to be there, and he, was, he took a selfie with somebody on right. his way to the ring. Like... Oh it, my god! It was so perfect. It was so perfect. But there was even point, and you saw it. Like there was a couple points in the match where, like, that angry face, yes. that disturbed face, wiped over him, and he got angry. And then he, then he kind of was like, right, oh, right, you snapped know. out of it. It is, it is so good. The struggle. I mean, even go back to where, like when Seth burnt it down. Like that, oh, just that, that look. That like, why are you like, doing tears this to in me? The face, why are you doing? Yeah. 
<sighs> just it, like he, it is a. It I is shouldn't a, be this into a, like a wrestling angle at my age. But I, we should. But Why should we? There are li- Ryan. There's literally people dressing up as stormtroopers and Wookies and shit like that going to the movies tonight. I saw when I saw Rocky Balboa in the theaters. There was a guy like in a boxing robe and shorts and boxing gloves. Like, did we go see that together? Cause, we did. Okay, because I was gonna say there right. was definitely a dude like, dressed up like Rocky. Why not get wrapped up in it? Like, like, in like, this is what entertainment should do. That's to That's a good point. That's like, fair. N- like, I mean, there obviously I'm, I'm can be lines that that can be crossed, but I think just getting this wrapped up in a story, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fair. All right, I appreciate you. I feel better now. Okay, good. Good. I'm, I'm, Tim's I'm, dressing up like a furry this weekend. Is that the same thing? Uh, wait. Is it like a him and his old lady sort of a deal? I don't know. I think it's just him. Okay. Well, it depends. He's how got you, a really cool squirrel outfit. It depends what you do. With he won't that. admit it on the show next week or it two de- weeks. It whenever depe- he can it depends. We're what, on next week. Yeah, we're on next yeah, week. Next week. Uh, it depends what you do with that. Well, mm, it's not fun things. Uh, oh, right. He wouldn't tell his pastor. Uh, about the it. NWA TV title is returning during Saturday's NWA Into the Fire pay per view. It was announced that the TV title will be returning at the next pay per view, which has been announced for January twenty fourth of twenty twenty. Sweet. Um, do you? I, I've I've seen some some snarky people, sarcastic people, commenting on the fact that how could it be a TV title when they're not on TV? Stupid comment. Uh, um, they are on T. I mean, my Roku TV has YouTube. Right. If you don't consider YouTube TV, like YouTube's just not. It's not the YouTube of like 1990. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe not 1990. Right. In 2005, YouTube, where you were just watching stupid clips of stuff. <laughs> it is very different. Right. I mean, YouTube, there there are people that that. I mean, that like are a like YouTube like pro member or whatever. That like, like provider, right? Content provider, like that's and like that's yeah, like you can watch like YouTube exclusive. Anybody that, that has a kid will probably know this, but like if your kids, I don't know, fifth, sixth, middle school aged, they're watching YouTube all the time. Like they're not interested in watching television shows no. right now. They're watching like people's lives in front of them. It's like new reality TV. My niece watches fucking YouTube almost all the not all the time, but she watches it a lot. Like, what sure. do you watch it? Why do you keep watching that? It's just well, I mean, people doing shit. I mean, we were gonna <clears throat> excuse me, talk. <clears throat> just get it out. Talk to Maria Manning tonight. I mean, her and Ted's channel. Bingo. Like it is just like a vlog of their daily life, right? And like, like the, the here's the deal: if we vlogged our life. Wouldn't be as exciting as that. I'm going to no, tell you that right now. No, would not be that exciting. Here comes Ryan going to work. Here comes Big Jim going, going to, to work. work. Here, here comes Jim are. coming home. Right. Like, um, up there bitching about their jobs now. Let me, uh, let me, let me find one of the videos. I'm going to try and f- pull up. Now, this, the most recent video that they posted was from yesterday. Uh, they had a meet and greet in New York, 1.8 thousand views. Um, a couple or three and a half thousand views, 3,000 views. Um, I mean, they're, they're averaging around 300,000 views. There was one that had over 8,000, like, wait, you just said 300,000 views. I'm sorry. 3,000 views, okay. not 300,000, but You're like, like, there's one with 8,000. They're averaging around 3,000. There's a few videos that have up, uh, you know, four, around 10 grand. Sure. You know, like that, that's a lot of people that are like subscribed. Do me a favor. Just go back to that YouTube channel that you had up there and just look up Ryan's world. Ryan's World? Yeah, go ahead. It should come right up. Ryan's World, okay. Yep, it should be a little kid. Sure is. Yep. Tell me how many views this little fucker has. Well, he has 23 million subscribers. Right. Ho! The most recent video was posted 15 hours ago. One million views. There it is. A million. So these are kids that are watching this Ryan kid like open toys and shit like that. It's it's like Nick Jr. He just does stupid shit and plays. But like kids are, are super addicted to watching this shit. This one was exercise songs for children, body parts, music video, and more. It's like a right, million views. A million views. Holy Jim, just Lord. scroll back a little bit. Like look at a, a last week video, and like just see how many views. There you go. That's good enough. 
four four weeks ago, four and a half million views. Right there it is, man. So don't tell me that YouTube doesn't get the views and like don't yeah. consider that it's television TV anymore. Shut it's up. TV. Um, Long story short, it's TV. Yeah, a hundred percent. I wish I was that Ryan. <laughs> I wish you were that Ryan too, right? Ryan. We'd have a real nice shit. Um, Let's go to that Three Count Thursday YouTube channel while we're on there. Make sure you uh, subscribe there. We post all of our weekly videos there, and maybe we'll put some more up in the new year. I think we f- we need to do something. More. Yeah, we got to figure something out. Um, I'd love to do some watch alongs. I don't know if anybody would be interested in a watch along ever. Um, but like, we could probably could how we could even do a watch along to like NXT just once, and just we'll give you live what we think's happening on NXT while you watch NXT with us. There's that, there's the, a, a Twitter page that it's, it's just like a woman in like a hooded sweatshirt on her couch. And like, just, she rubs me the wrong way. She's, oh, she annoys she's the shit out of me. Extra. Ryan. Thank you. She's very extra. But dude, she's a good looking chick talking about pro wrestling. Why wouldn't people watch? That's true. We need a good looking chick in the three count, uh, in the three count universe. Let's just give Brittany Nicole our up, YouTube Lou? login and let her uh, let her do something like that. Um, oh, Lou, Lou knows who, who hates the kid. Who Ryan's world? Yeah, yeah. Screw Ryan's world. <laughs> um, final piece I have: New Day and Street Profits sign new deals. Uh, first reported on WWE backstage, the New Day have agreed to matching multi-year extensions with WWE. Uh, they solidified a pact of identical length and compensation on their contracts to maintain. Equal status among the team. The news of Kingston's extension broke uh, on the Trio's weekly podcast, The New Day Feel the Power, which I fucking love, by the way. Do you really? It is so good. It is so much like I, I enjoy After the Bell with Corey Graves. Sure. But the New Day one is is really, it's just, really it's fun. It is. It, it is just them. Right. It's just, which which I love. Um, and then also, as first reported on WWE Backstage, the Street Profits have agreed on Multi-year extensions with WWE. Since coming to Raw in 2019, the Street Profits have been bringing all that smoke to the red brand. The duo defeated the OC in their debut match and continued to move up the tag team rank. Did you see last week when they did like the weekend update segment? Hilarious. Dude, it was so good. Love it. I fucking loved it. It, it was it was spectacular. Let's roll into the comments real quick because I touched, uh, I touched on something. Uh, Jason says, my kids watch YouTube Kids and he doesn't get it. Um, Lou says he's been quiet all night and hates the kid. Um, Devin says his nephew watches YouTube all the time. Like, this is something that a younger generation has gravitated to for some reason and has really just sunk into that, I don't know, my age and everything, we still use YouTube for what it is. Like, I, I watch clips there all the time. You're sure. Um, we were, we were playing some music before we went on, on air. That if you could check us out on the pre, uh, the pre-show post-show. What is this? Oh, 8-Bit Christmas. This is so good. Let's take this in for a moment. I love this song. I never I never knew how much I needed 8-bit Christmas music in my life until I was in a video game store. Really? Yeah, so this is they're playing play. it? Oh yeah. man, this is brilliant. I love it. I think I'd be stuck in my head all night. I don't even have anything else to say after that. But yeah, no, like that 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 was on YouTube. That was it, right? Right, and that's YouTube. Like that's what we use YouTube for. Yes, yeah, we don't we don't use it to make millions of dollars. You got a kid? Your kid's like this all the time. I bet all the time, all the time. You go you go out to eat. There's gonna be a kid with a phone on YouTube. On the YouTubes. Um, Hopefully, watching the Three Count Thursday YouTube YouTube dot com slash Three Count Thursday. Maybe maybe not. I don't know. Depends how young the kid is because we do say we do the we, we do say the bad words. Um, I don't know if I even said the F word tonight. I, think I, I certainly I did. know you did. I'm trying to do better at that. I yeah, really am. Fuck it. <laughs> ah, he says. Jim. Um, yeah, I got nothing else to add, man. I think I think we can just wrap this thing up. We're going to put a bow on it. Um, where can people follow you? I'm sure we're going to get snarky at each other this Sunday. What's this on Sunday? On Twitter. Oh, we probably will. We probably will. I, honest <laughs> to God, I'm going to try to stay off Twitter during that game. Really? Yeah, I'm really going to try. Because you're going to get it from Matt and myself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. I just, I'm going to have to avoid it. Cowboys and Eagles this Sunday, pretty much for all the marbles at this point. Um, you're at RYN Eagle? Yeah, I'm at RYN Eagle. I, I am. 
I mean, I don't know. I tweet sometimes about wrestling. I tweet mostly about sports. Right, or to be a smart ass at Big Jim. I, I do like to be a smart ass at Big Jim. <laughs> I do. Uh, I'm at Big Jim Sports, by the way. Um, if you want to find Tim or Matt or Mark, uh, you can you can try and find them and ask them yourself. That's <laughs> their penalty for not being on the show this week. Let's see what Mark's up in Hershey Park. Enjoying Christmas, Christmas candy, candy lane. lane. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, Tim and they're both out for uh, for Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. Good where deal. um, where Han dies? Where Han dies, folks? Um, <laughs> the kid's not even in this movie. What are y'all watching? The the child. Devin says he hopes it ends in a tie. I'd be fine with that because the Cowboys it's advantage Cowboys. I think. You know what ended in a tie tonight? Star Wars. <laughs> um. Yeah, let's. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna continue to wrap this up. Make sure you visit threecountthursday.com. That is our home network or our home page. Our home network is NGSC Sports. We also stream on leebsports.com. That is L E E I B Sports.com. You can also uh, make sure you subscribe to us on all of our podcast feed, our YouTube channel, buy our merchandise at whatamaneuver.net. Check out the sponsor of this show, Alicia's Pillows and Things. Go to NGSC Sports.com. Find the Alicia's Pillows and Things tab on the homepage and place your order. And uh, as this is our final show before Christmas, uh, Christmas is next Wednesday, folks, as hard as that is to believe. Um, we, we sincerely hope that each and every person who comes in contact with this show um, in any way, shape, or form throughout the year, um, we hope that you have a wonderful uh, Christmas, a wonderful holiday season. Uh, we are going to try to be on the air next week. Uh, I don't see any reason why we don't. Christmas is over, and we're get back to our regular lives come December 26th. Um, but uh, seriously, uh, we hope you have a great, wonderful, and happy uh, holiday season, uh, and we'll be back next week. Until then, stay safe, stay smart, love Kim Lemon, and go for the pin.